Welcome to the 2024 Australian Age Swimming Championships, live from the magnificent Gold Coast, where it's time again for the largest and most anticipated meet on the swimming calendar. It's time for the next generation of Aussie athletes to make their mark in the pool. More than 2,600 of them across 400 clubs will gather here at the iconic Gold Coast Aquatic Centre, ready for battle, stroke for stroke, to be crowned the next Australian age champion. And you've got the best seat in the house, right here, live and exclusive on Nine Now. Ah, the beautiful Gold Coast, a stunning arena to be in and to be seated at the Australian Age Championships. We've got front row seats here in the Gold Coast Aquatic Centre to the biggest event on the calendar for Swimming Australia. It is the 2024 National Age Championships where we uncover and discover the next generation of superstars in the pool. It's Kate Allman here calling all the action alongside two stars of the pool themselves, Matt Welsh and Braden Jason, Paralympian and Olympic legends. Today is day four and we can't wait for it. The sun is out, the crowd is out in force. We've got a couple of events to look forward to, but we start off with the boys, 17 years, 50 metre backstroke. Uh, we actually have the, the girls 16 years at 50 backstroke, first heat in the water. And they are off and racing, fastest qualifier for this heat, Sophia Bizello from Trinity Grammar. For these 50s, working our way to faster and faster heats. Quick start there from uh, Georgia Dunn out in lane two. Very quick down to the wall. Five metres to go. Counting the strokes onto the wall and a big lunge. And a time of 31.29. 31.29, the time laid down today. The heats get faster. This is the slower seated times. And we go faster and faster at each heat. So Matt Welsh, you're a backstroke champion. It's an honour to have you alongside me in the booth. What are you looking for in these 50s? It's a splash and dash, isn't it? It really is a splash and dash. We want to see a high rating through the arms. The 15 metres, so that uh, the first 15 metres of the race, they can go underwater. So we'll be looking at uh, the, uh, the fastest uh, time to that 15, and whoever can get that underwater butterfly kick done well will uh, we'll get there. Usually hard to overtake from there, so it really is all about that first 15 to the first 25 and then hold station as best you can. Second heat in the water of the girls, 16 years, 50 metre backstroke. Great insights coming from Matt Welsh, a backstroke Olympic champion himself. He reckons the first 15 is crucial, Matt. It really is, and uh, a great start there from the field. These outside lanes, though, Kayla Pratt from Taralga out in lane zero, looking uh, very, very strong. We saw uh, the outside lane win it from uh, the previous heat, and it looks like it is going to be Kayla Pratt to touch the wall first, but it is going to be very close across the pool. It is Kayla with a time of 31.62. Also in an outside lane, lane eight, Leanne Bruscher. Yeah, Leanne Boucher out of Westside Christchurch, really tight. She was coming in uh, hot and late and, you know, just a, just a couple of hundreds of a, two tenths of a second behind. That's how tight these come down to. The finals placings are going to come down to just inches, fingertips and hundreds of a second. Heat three is away in the girls' 16 years, 50 metres backstroke. Centre of the pool. The coveted lane for Ava Atlanta. Ava Antala taking out early. She's a 16-year-old out of Campbelltown and making a move in the central lane. But look out for Indy Sporchik out of Essendon. Just 16 years old and they've got so much professionalism in that club and in Essendon, in Melbourne, there's... A lot of swimmers coming out of Victoria now. We know there's so much strength in New South Wales and Queensland. But the Victorians, they're making their move now, Matt. Yes, Annabelle Ullert, 31.59. Very similar times to the first couple of heats. So Bond University. Some great, uh, great swimming here to start off this 
fourth morning of heat swimming as the swimmers get ready for heat four. Heat four and the seeding times come down into the 31s for this one. So they get faster as we go. There's only a couple of, time of swimmers that have managed to break that 31 in this age group. And they're coming out strong here. Braden, Jason, lane one looks good. We love to see those outside markers starting to push through. They are 16 years of age. So when you're that young, you can drop PBs like it's a piece of cake. And lane one looking extremely strong coming into the touch. It's lane two. My apologies. Lane but she two, gets Gemma the first Holtz. touch. And under that 31 mark, 30.52. That is a very big swim. She's very happy with that time. Big personal best. And that's going to rival the fastest times. That uh, could even mean a final swim tonight. We'll have to see once we get closer to our seated heats. The results on the screen. 30.52. Heat 5 underway for this girls 16 years 50 backstroke fastest qualifier grace doherty in the middle of the pool we've been having some outside smokers though and we've got another one chloe cloette from st peter's western out in lane nine in right lane at the edge and also lane one stella simone Stella Salamone from MLC Aquatic, that is. And in lane seven, keep your eyes on Julia Mazur from Norwood. The previous heat laid down an impressive time. Jenna Holt got 30.52. She's the first to break the 31. And this heat, well, it's even just behind it. Stella Salamone just 0 0.016 behind. So she will be in that final, you'd hope and you'd think. Those two are the first two to get in the 30s. So as we approach heat six, that's the time being laid down and the standard being set. This is the first of our seeded heats. Heat six now in the water. These are timed finals, so the times are crucial. 30.5 or so is going to be the marker that's been laid down and set by Jenna Holt in the water now, though. They're neck and neck in the middle. We've got Jessica Cullen out of Knox Pimble in lane four, but lane three is proving to be one of the fast ones, as is lane two. Bella Murchie in lane two, and Michaela Larkin is in lane five. It'll come down to the touch. These are just fingertip finishes. It's lane two in the end. Bella Murch, he gets 31.07. Not quite as fast as the previous two heats, but a nice time. Yes, 31.07. Some blistering times in those non seeded heats getting into the 30 points. The last three heats here, six, seven, and eight of eight are our seeded heats. So we are expecting some faster times. Heat seven at the wall, ready to go. Heat seven underway. Some more fast starting there from Isabella Russell from Highlanders in lane four. A big start as well from Matilda Burns from Bond out in lane nine. There's a great opportunities in these 50s for these outside swimmers. Same distance, same race, same everything, and making good use of it. All these times are within one second of each other, so it just does to come down to that touch on the touchpad. That's an impressive one. Erin McGarry, another 30. 30.65, and she should be happy with that. The crowd loves it. Fastest time so far there. From Ebony Nix, 30.46. 
as we get ready for our fastest heat for this girl's 16 years, 50 metres backstroke. Final heat is underway for this girl's 16 year old 50 metres backstroke. A long way underwater there from our fastest qualifier, Ainsley Trotter from Bond. An entry time of 28.05 seconds, and she's showing every bit of it right next to her, Zoe Amundensen from Churchy. They are pushing each other, they'll be able to see each other in peripheral vision. And all the way onto the wall with five metres to go. It is nothing onto the wall. Who gets there first? It is Trotter first. Time of 28.48. No. That is the first that gets under the 30. And just a reminder to everyone watching at home, these are timed finals. They are not heats. There's no final tonight. The time is crucial. And it looks like we've just found our one, two, and three with 29s on the clock, breaking that incredible barrier of the 30 second mark 28 seconds matt that as a backstroker how impressive is that well for 16 years of age that's uh, a pretty good time and you can really see those times dropping down there's a lot of girls around that 31 second mark a couple breaking into that 30 then all of a sudden uh smashed through that 30 barrier into 29s and a couple into the 28 so four one hundredths of a second separating them we just have tighter and tighter racing. We had a tie last night in one of the racings. Even the computers couldn't separate them. But uh, it is uh, more and more tight and tight. Uh, an interesting way to, uh, to get into the water here. I'm looking at, uh, at lane five facing backwards. I mean, he is doing a backstroke yeah, race, right. so it probably does seem right, but I've actually never seen anyone facing the wrong way. Well, it's Lachlan Pham out of Mounties, and I wonder if that's part of his strategy. I do like it. It sort of keeps him blindfolded to it's what's going on. It's very efficient. I've got to say, he's uh, very efficiently enters the water. Fastest qualifier, Ethan Ravensdale from Nutterwadding in Victoria. Here we go, the first heat or timed final it is of the boys, 17 years, 50 metre backstroke. A reminder to everyone watching at home on 9 now, these are timed finals. So no final tonight. The time is all important. All of these heats will compete for a medal and it comes down to the time. At the moment, four is looking good. Ethan Ravensdale out of Nana Wadding. He's putting on a show, but out in lane seven, the wide lane's always got to be watched. Luca Martinuzzi from MCA. He'll come down to the touch and it is Ravensdale with a 28.03. Ethan using his huge wingspan there to get to the wall first, a big lunge to the wall, 28.03. Not a bad time considering his entry time. These, uh, as you said before, Kate, these times get faster and faster. The timed finals, the final heat of these five will be our fastest qualifiers. The final three will be seeded heats. Heat two now in the water. And a very high start there from uh, lane four, Xander Halfen from Warringah, completely out of the water, but it is probably the best start from lane six, Nicola Bonjavac from Aquablitz. And it is lane four, though, that Xander Halfen after that big start, coming to the four with five metres to go, stretching out all the way. Touching the wall, getting under the 28-second barrier, 27.95. Well, that's an impressive time. It's better than his seeding time. We, all of the times in this uh, time final came in with a 28. So if you're thinking these races are coming in with PBs as their seeding time, he's just broken it and broken another mental barrier, Matt. Definitely, and that's what these racing is about, uh, just getting that opportunity in front of the crowd, in front of their peers. Heat three in the water for the boys. 17 years, 50 metre backstroke. They go hard and fast, these time finals, and the time is crucial. Out fast is Michael Thomas from St Peter's Western, a club that is renowned in Australian swimming. 
royalty in this part of the world, especially the Gold to Coast. It's raining gold in that club. But out in lane one, Lo Lachlan Ison from Westside Christchurch is burning down the outside lane. There's some outsiders that come in. Silas Phillips also was there, but the first touch went to Brock Hepburn. Oh, there was nothing in that huge underwater swim there from James Neal. But it was Brock Hepburn who held it together all the way to get to the wall first with another quick time. We can see the results on the board there. 27.82, 27.83 and 27.88. Very, very tight racing. A couple of 27s in there. We'd love to see it, but I think for these later heats, I think it's going to take a good 26 to even try and be competitive for those medal positions. Lane four underway. Braden, we saw uh, Eamon McCarthy there sitting very, very high in the, on the, uh, the wall before the start, but it's Oliver Lind up well in the middle of the pool. Oliver Lind looked really strong there off that wall. And as you were saying, mate, they really want to make sure they utilize as much 15 meters underwater as possible. It's the fastest way to get down the pool. And as we see, it's going to come down to a touch. There's nothing in it. Matt, I would love to know your insights on how to get the best touch because sometimes in these races we're seeing athletes that look to be ahead and someone pips them at the post. How do you get under and back to get that final stretch out far? Well, Oliver Lind just did it. It really is a matter of counting your strokes under the flags. Uh, there was nothing in that one again. 27 8 6. Um, oh, sorry, 27 uh, 1 5, 27 2 6. There was 0 0.1 in it. Yeah, counting strokes uh, on the way in, making sure that you know exactly where you are and then making that call whether it's going to be a, a short touch and just a quick go or you have to do a big lunge to get that extra little distance on it. You see the same in breaststroke as well when they come into the wall. Do they have that the, onto a full touch or do you have to do a little half, uh, half touch butterfly as well? So you, you sort of get used to it. The more you swim, the more you train, the more you practice those uh, finishes in training, the easier it gets to make the call. But uh, yeah, every single time you get to the wall, it is <laughs> ever so slightly different. Oh, man, and so tense as well in these time finals because it's crucial, right? Uh, in terms of a start, did you have a preferred positioning with your feet? Were you high out of the water? Were you in the middle? Well, I'm not trying to be the in-my-day person, but <laughs> in my day, we didn't actually have the, uh, the ledges. Uh, and you can see on the walls when, uh, when you can see, see a couple of straps coming down as we see the results on the screen. Uh, and you can see now a couple of straps coming down from the blocks and a bit of an apparatus uh, sitting on the blocks. That houses a, uh, uh, a little ledge that they can put their feet on it to get a nice grip. Uh, so my starts were a little bit different. Fifth and fastest of the timed finals coming into the water now. A big start for the central lanes. Cody Byrne out of Bond got under the water and fast. His underwater kick was crucial. But lane one and lane zero also looking good. Thomas Booth from south side in lane zero. Keep an eye on him. Also, Caleb Yago from the hills making a late break for it. It'll come down to the wire this one. They may even get under the 27. They do. That's 26.78 to Jack Moore. Nicholas Gladen there from lane five. Big swim, 26.70. Kate, you were so excited you got up out of your seat. Uh, we're in a little tent on the side of the pool and uh, we raced a little bit higher. You jumped out of your seat to, uh, to get a better look at that race and smacked your head on the, uh, <laughs> on the structure above <laughs> I, you. Uh, I did. So Thanks it is that exciting reminder. here. Well, Absolutely it, amazing. It was also so that I could see lane nine. The, the barriers of the um, outside the pool are a little sort of tall. So I wanted to get a proper look at Caleb Yago, who is a fascinating swimmer to watch. Uh, he's good in a lot of different events. So keep your eye on him. Didn't quite get the touch there. But some impressive times all around. Well, we're very lucky to start the day with some great backstroke events. But now we go in to the girls' 17 years, 200 individual medley. So we get a chance to see all of the strokes. The Australian record holder for this, Kayla McEwen, 209.94, getting under Test two start. minutes 10, which Test is absolutely start, incredible. Only. That's going to be a uh, no mean feat for these girls. But uh, two heats for this race. The winner of the 200 breaststroke last night, Alana Torrance in lane five for this event. So we know she's in good form. Fastest qualifier, Jacqueline Barclay from St. Peter's Western.
take your marks. In the water now, the girls, 17 years, 200 metre individual medley, and there's some stars in this one. We know Alana Torrance is great. She had some perfect results last night. They're into the fly leg here, but watch this space. There's a couple of ones to watch, including Macy Sheridan in this event. 17 years, 200 IM. She's a crowd favourite from last year. Five golds in the age championships in 2023. She'll be on later. But right now, we've got heat one of the prelims. Lana Torrance touching their first 29-7-9. Only swimmer under the 30-second barrier for the butterfly. Now, I know Alana very well, and she hates backstroke. Uh, you can see her rate uh, really slow compared to the rest of the field. She does manage to, uh, to keep the distance up, and so she's holding on, but breaststroke is her forte. So if she can hold with the girls for this, uh, this 50, she should be right. But a great backstroke right next to her, Hannah Costello from Nudgee College making about a body length on the rest of the field in just that 50 metres. And we've seen how crucial the breaststroke leg can be. Sienna Tui, a breaststroke star, won the 200 IM last night in her age group. Uh, Brayden, in terms of breaststroke, what are you looking for to get out ahead and get an advantage in this lap? Well, it's going to be really interesting to see who saved their legs in that backstroke leg there because obviously the power from breaststroke all comes from your leg drive. So as we see, we're starting to see Torrance starting to turn it on here, starting to push in front of Costello in lane six and put herself in front. But there's two heats here. There's just under 20 competitors and top 10 will be making it to the final tonight. Fastest qualifier in the next event with an entry time of 2.19. Basically exactly the same as Taryn Roberts. So we know that these two swimmers out in front, Taryn and Alana, uh, right in the mix for a centre lane. It is Taryn slightly ahead, I think, from the angle that I'm sitting, but nothing in it coming down with less than 20 to metres to go. Well, the fastest qualifier, as you said, was Jacqueline Barclay out of St Peter's Western. She is in the next heat, so we'll have to see how the times go. These girls are going to have to work hard because, of course, Jacqueline Barclay, she's a representative of her country already. And there are the times. First, Taryn Roberts... 2.21.37, that's going to be close. Jacqueline Barclay came in with a seeding time of 2.19, but no one else was really close to her, so that might get her through. Great freestyle leg as well. Just looked really strong and in control. We obviously saw her in that 400 final last night as well, guys, so I think we know she's got a really strong breaststroke behind her and freestyle as well. Her back end of this 200 IM tonight is going to be sensational. Take your marks. So in the water now, a name that is rising through the ranks of swim swimming in Australia and internationally, lane four, Jacqueline Barclay, out of the powerhouse of St. Peter's Western. She had a breakout meet in Doha. She was world junior backstroke champion and a key player in the next generation of dolphin backstrokers. A couple of mixed results, silver, 200 backstroke, Silver in that 400 mixed medley. And she's here right now in front of us at the 2024 Age Championships on the Gold Coast doing her thing and making a play possibly for international selection at the Olympics. Of course, the Paris trials are on in just a couple of months. This is almost a precursor to that event. And we love watching her here at home, Matt Welsh. In terms of those athletes that are eyeing off the Opens and just a few months away with Paris, what do they need to do in terms of putting on a good show here? Do they want to get a good time or they want to keep something left? Well, going out in 29.1 is a good way to start. That was a huge uh, 50 butterfly to start and even better 50 backstroke from Barclay turning in 104.38. But it really is a, a matter of making the most of the opportunities this is a huge opportunity, the biggest swim meet in Australia for the year and uh, making use of the crowd, making use of the, uh, the competition around them and that's exactly what uh, Jacqueline is doing. Fastest qualifier for this event, it seems, was uh, Taryn Roberts in the previous uh, race but it looks like uh, Jacqueline at this stage is going to, uh, to blitz that time. Just uh, holding back in this breaststroke, obviously backstroke and uh, butterfly a little bit... Uh, Stronger for her, looks like Talika Irvine from West's Illawarra just coming through and will touch first at the 150 metre mark. 
It's just down to the freestyle now. A long way underwater for Jacqueline Barclay and coming up even with Talca Talika. Well, we know the 50 freestyle is a specialty event for Jacqueline Barclay. She was the age champion in 2023, clocking a 26 0.05, but it's going to be neck and neck. I mean, Talika Irvine coming in strong. Of course, there is a heat here in front of us, and there's going to be a final tonight. So the girls want to keep something in the tank, maybe save themselves to make their move then. First and second, Irvine and Barclay just right behind each other. That's probably not her best, but enough to get to a final. Well, it's hard when there's only two heats, so you want to make sure you get into that final, do enough to get in there, and it looks like Jacqueline Barclay has done enough to get through, but just looked in control that whole swim, and we know she's got that 50 freestyle background, so watch her and Taryn Roberts tonight in that final. Oh, it's going to be a great battle. That will be a great battle. We can see the results there. 222.70 from Talika Irvine. Jacqueline Barclay, 223.02. I think held back a little bit towards the end, knowing that they've got to uh, race tonight. So, yeah, four of them at tonight will be in the middle of the pool. As we look forward to the next event, event 53, the boys, 18 years, 200 individual medley. Another two heats of this. Fastest qualifier in this event, Joshua Kerr from Manly with a time of 201.77. The Australian record... You can see there on the screen, 158.99. So only a little bit off that, uh, about uh, two seconds, uh, three seconds rather, off that time. Yeah, Josh Kerr, probably one to watch. And we'll talk more about him as the event gets underway. But you can see that the title holder broke that two-minute mark. Take your marks. <laughs> Underway for the uh, event 53, the boys 18 years, 200 metres individual medley. Already out to a decent start. Joshua Kerr, fastest qualifier for this event as they're halfway through the butterfly. Don't want to kill themselves too much in the butterfly. They've still got the backstroke and the breaststroke to go, but a great way to start so far. Yeah, Joshua Kerr, one to watch the backstroke title holder of the 50 metres last year, but also really a medley specialist. He's a regular on the podium for the National Age Championships out of Manly. Star on the rise. He actually idolises Caleb Dressel, and uh, I, I mentioned this last night. He has this hidden talent that he loves to... Um, share. He's able to solve a Rubik's Cube, so not only a star of the pool, but has the nine to match as we see him stroking long and Matt Welsh, backstroke champion. What do you like about that style? It looks good to me. He looks very, very easy. Looks like he could probably solve a Rubik's Cube while he's doing it. On to the backstroke to breaststroke turn, the unique turn to individual medley races and into the breaststroke. This is the stroke, this is the leg that sets the cat amongst the pigeons. Who can hold it? And I've got to say, Joshua Kerr, after a very good backstroke and uh, butterfly lead-out leg, is holding this breaststroke, trying to get the distance off the stroke. What, what can you see, Braden, uh, leading into this 150-metre mark? He just, Josh Kerr in lane four looking extremely strong, but we're seeing our 200 breaststroke champion, Remy Lennon from Moringa, starting to make his move now in this third 50. This last 50 is going to be one to watch, but as we know, it's one of two heats to come. So will these boys put the afterburners on or hold back for tonight? Remy definitely had a fantastic breaststroke leg there. Brought himself uh, right into contention. He was about fourth, and now it looks like he's battling for the lead with Joshua Kerr. In fact, all four of them across the pool Bill Atkinson, Joshua Kerr, Zachary Tay and Remy Lennon are all battling for the lead. Almost just pacing themselves. Uh, but it is uh, Zachary Tay in lane five who will do that last minute burst to get to the wall first. We love to see a little bit of a nail-biting touch to the wall in the heats because, yes, there's only two heats here as the times start to come up. But Matt... 208, 208.05, the time for our winner. To eight to, it's a very solid heat swim, but as we were saying, there's two heats here. So Josh Coe's PD is a 201, so he's a little bit over that, but maybe he's feeling pretty confident that that is enough to get him in to the final tonight. One heat to go. He's in that top four at the moment. Do you think he'd be nervous? 
look, I was actually just surprised that the four of them swam along all together. It was almost like synchronised swimming. Usually when that happens, it really pushes each of them and they all want to get to the wall first. And But there was a point there when none of them wanted to make the move. They were all sort of saving themselves. And they're like, oh, it doesn't really matter. We're, we're fine. There's no real pressure. We can see the time there. Look, ha less than half a second between the first uh, four there. So... All of them are fairly confident they'll make the final and they just didn't want to make uh, make that move and hurt themselves any more than they needed to. So don't, don't often marks. see that. Second and final heat of this event, the 200 metre IM. And just previously we saw a visitor from Singapore, Zach Tay, take out that heat. Of course, we have a record number of international visitors at this event. The Australian Age Championships, one of the most envied championships nationally across the globe. Matt Welsh would know all too well just how hard these national championships are. Australia has one of the strongest swimming programs in the world, and it's probably us in the US that are the hardest national championships. Yeah, it is very, very tough. The, uh, the selection criteria at nationals and this individually, although not a selection um, for the Olympics and, and the top, it is a lot of pride on the line and, uh, and still selection for some teams. A fantastic leg here from uh, lane six, Harvey Lark. A fastest qualifier, Carl Alberton, uh, with an entry time of 2.03 and looked fantastic in the butterfly. Just back a little bit in the backstroke, though, and, uh, and Harvey able to make the most of that through to the breaststroke leg now, trying to lengthen that out. This will really kill their legs and their lungs leading in to the freestyle, but it does sort them out. We saw four of them almost uh, line stern coming down to the line. It looks like it's almost going to be a repeat as they all s settle themselves into a routine or into a, a rhythm rather, coming down to the 150 metre mark. Yep, only two heats in this particular event, so they just need to do enough to get into the final tonight. 200 IM, it is a taxing endeavour. They want to save a little bit of gas in the tank as they await the opportunity to race under lights here at Gold Coast Aquatic Centre. But who's turning on the Jets now? It is lane four, Carl Alberton out of Miami. He's got an extra bit of fuel in him, and that freestyle stroke looks great, Braden Jason. Freestyle looking really strong, but watch out for Hunter Millgate in lane five. He was in that 400 freestyle final last night. But as we see, Albert's in number four. Lane four will take that for the second heat out. And very similar times to the first heat. So it's going to be tight to make that final four tonight. 207 to 208. He looks pretty gassed by it, and I guess that's the effect of the 200 IM. I mean, putting Butterfly first, how cruel can you be in a racing competition? And that's the way it's always been with swimming. I don't know why. They, they love to make it hard. I, I think it would be worse putting Butterfly last. I think getting yes. it out of the way does work. And uh, we actually did have a, a competition a while ago uh, called the uh, some Skins events, and where they would have a mixed medley, and they would you would randomly guess assigned an order oh, for no. the medley oh. so you'd see people racing backstroke versus breaststroke and butterfly versus freestyle and uh, by the end that all obviously do their four legs of the IM in different orders and it was amazing how they all sort of sorted themselves out into a similar time but the the ones that had the butterfly earlier on were always that little bit better off uh, than the ones that had the butterfly towards the end so I, I think it is it is the right call but it does seem a little bit uh, a little bit cruel to, to gas them before they even get into the, the meat of the race well it's just such a grueling endeavor is check out the results carl alberton as we said out of miami 207 we will get a summary of those heats together and we will show you exactly who's going to the final. So Carl Alberton in the second heat, he made his move and did it at the right time, 207. Cameron Rakini, second, Hunter Milgate. These are all common names we've seen a couple of events. And Brayden, they, these athletes often contesting a, a bigger range of events than they would usually in the Opens. So juniors, junior nationals is where they test out which stroke they're good at, which they are excelling at and gonna hopefully make a way into the Opens. And then they kind of whittle it down and usually pick a couple of strokes and distances that they are going to contest. As we look at the next event, the girls, 13 years, 50 metre freestyle on the blocks now. Title holder for this event, Yolan Kukla, 25.35. Yolan, a fantastic swimmer, set in 2009. 
And that uh, is that is a quick time, I can tell you. 25 seconds for a 13-year-old. That uh, record set in 2009. I think that's going to stay there for another 100 or so years. That's going to be a very tough one to break. The fastest qualifier in this event in our first heat, 26.95. So a little bit, a little bit off that time. Yeah, any record that's been held for that long, you'd think is uh, going to be a hard one to beat. We know in the age championships, there's records held by Ian Thorpe. There's records held by Ariane Titmus, Kelly McEwen. But those Thorpe, Liesl Jones ones have stood for so many years. So we see the first heat of the girls, 13 years, 50 metre freestyle. Matt Welsh just pointed out there's a record here that's been held since 2009 by Yolan Kukla out of St. Peter's Western. So that is going to be a hard one to beat, but they'll try and come close to it. 27s and 28s, 126 in this mix in lane four, Hannah Huseman. It is Mina Bettina uh, in lane five, though. First of all, 26-4-8. She'll be very happy with that time, much faster than her entry time. Really brought it home in the second 25. Out well, but out fairly even with the rest of the field, but a strong stroke and a big kick and a lunge to the wall. Got her a very nice time. Yeah, great time there. 26 is, that's all three of them under 26 there. So th that's impressive already. Those others, they seeded with 27s. So they'd be happy with those results, even though it's just a heat. Heat two coming in now. And the 26 mark is where we're at for the one, two, and three in terms of making your way into the top 10 for the finals tonight, of course. These are just heats, but there's so much on the line for the girls who have come all the way to the Gold Coast to make their way to compete under lights tonight. In lane three, looking good, is Octavia Mahoney out of St. Leonard's, 13 years old, and they're looking at 26s. It's so impressive. That's a 27 laid down by lane three, Zara Oloi. Oh, I'm apologies. Zara gets a 27. Yes, very tidy time there. There was not a lot in that field. Almost anyone could have, uh, could have got to that wall, but uh, Zara was just that touch ahead, about half an arm length. Uh, and we often see, obviously, the fastest swimmers from the middle of the pool. All of these uh, seeded heats uh, and even the heats after faster swimmer gets that middle, gets that advantage of being in the middle of the pool where they can see around and have people to race against. Diving into heat three here of this 13 girls, 50 metre freestyle. And in lane four, we've got one of the veterans here for our 13 year old girls in a number of finals last night, Sierra Jeffs. And she's showing why she was in a number of finals, leading the pack at the moment in front. But watch out, Matt. Lane eight is starting to make a move as well. Yes, it is Kira Jeffs from Yarra Plenty in lane four. But it looks like right next to her, Hannah Mounter in lane three, gets to the wall first with a time of 27.65. Just in line with the previous heats, so racing hard for a final swim tonight. Yeah, 26 is really the marker, isn't it, Matt? And for these 13-year-old girls, I mean, 26 for a 50 freestyle, they just get faster and faster. It is really, really quick. That was our third heat of the uh, the top three heats are seated. So the top 30 girls will be in those races. Now we move forward to uh, heat four. Heat four in the water now, and 26 is the number laid down to make your way into a final tonight. These seeding times are more in the 28s, but someone might come out with something special, as happens so often in the age national championships here in Australia. Lane eight going strong at the moment. Summer Groves making her way up, but lane two as well, Madison McKenna. It's between Groves and McKenna. And they'll have to put something special down. The 27s may just sneak in. McKenna had that heat, but it'll be up to how everyone else scores and swims to see whether she makes her way into the top 10. McKenna did have that heat. The girl's not taking too many breaths. I know uh, most of the boys, even last night, watching the 51, maybe two breaths. The girls probably three, maybe four breaths, but it's uh, still a bit of a lung buster. 
Yeah, lung buster it is, isn't it, Matt? And uh, we'll talk about lung busting. In terms of a long lung busting uh, event, Matt Welsh, this is one of them. 50 metres freestyle. How often would these girls be breathing? Well, Layla Murray there with a fast start, and they usually won't breathe until about halfway through the lap. Maybe another one just under the flags, and then it's up to them where they want to take another one before they uh, get to uh, the end of the lap but uh, head usually down for the last five at least and it does look like lane two Mary Steele stealing the show with a 28.30 nice zoom and uh, a yep. nice acknowledgement of the time from Mary there yeah, she loves it. We love it as well. It's a bit quicker than her seeding time, which is often what these athletes are looking for. They want to beat their time coming in. Many of them are sort of making their way through the ranks, only 13 years old, so plenty of time to make their way into faster times and more competitive times. But here comes the next heat. Heat in the six. water for heat six, and not a lot... Can, uh, separating these girls about half a second separating five heats so it's half a second with 50 girls in this 13 year old 50 freestyle so that's why we have a blanket across the field and it is anybody's race striving for that personal best time a time in the 27s would be amazing coming down to the wall it does look like lane six gets to the wall first Prothar 27.99, just scraping under that 28. Great swim and a big reaction from Zoe Crotha from Rackley. Fantastic. Great PB there. We love seeing it. People just scrape under that barrier. What a mental barrier that is at 28 seconds. And at 13 years of age, you give her a couple of years and what she's doing here, you do some mathematical equations. Beep, boop, beep. She's going to be going 25s, 24s in the next couple of years. And that's when you're hitting that elite Australian Open Women's Final quality. Heat seven of eight in this 50-metre freestyle splash and dash for the 13 years girls. We're seeing some talent and some impressive numbers. 26 is the marker to make your way into finals. These girls, you never know. There's always an outside lane, an outside chance that's going to stream their way in. Lane seven looking good so far. Imogen Murray from Bayside in the red cap, but out wide as well is lane nine, Evelyn Song. It looks like seven will have the touch. It's Murray. 28.25, and she'll be happy with that as well. Her time coming in was 28.94, so she's beaten that one. Fantastic swimming from these girls. Lots of personal best times, which we'd love to see the results on the board. 28.25 from Imogen Murray. Our final heat now, heat eight on the blocks. Heat eight on the blocks now, and Sophia McEwen in lane four out of Yarra Plenty. Matilda Dillon in lane three. This one's going to be tight. Of course, they are rating, racing for pride and their personal bests. This is the slower seeded of the heats, but they're just 13 years old and they're making their way up the ranks. There's plenty of progression to come, and that's what we love about the age championships. You'll see an athlete come back in a couple of years and be up in the top seeded heat, the top final, having previously not made it into finals. That one may not make it into the final tonight, but Yasmin Ezekiel has done well. She's beaten her entry time by about 0.3 of a second. And a little fist pump too. We love to see it. We love the passion that these swimmers have at just 13. They've put in so much work to just be here, so it's fantastic to see. Little PBs, that's what gives them a little bit of confidence to come back next year. And hey, we don't know anything can happen between the ages of 13 and 14. A lot of changes happen. And, Hall, let me tell you, with a bit of work under their belts, we're going to see some great times next year. Yeah, you're so right. And uh, look at that, Matt, as well. The Mina Burton, Bertina Nato. Apologies for the pronunciation. If anyone's watching at home can help out, please do. We're sorry if we get it wrong. Um, that was impressive, Matt Welsh. Very much. And a tight little field there, 26-4-8. Uh, fast qualify through for the finals as we move to uh, the boys' 14 50 metres freestyle. Event 55, heat one. He won of the boys 14 years, 50 metre freestyle. This one's a good one. The Australian record is held by none other than Kyle Chalmers out of Marion. If you don't know that name, you shouldn't be here watching the AIDS Championships. 
Australian royalty in swimming. And Ethan Hagerbeyer in lane five looks to make his way into that royalty as well. He's from Knox Pimble. And it looks like he'll get the fastest seated time here. 23.86. It's faster than what he came in with. And he's happy with that. The crowd loves it. And that's at the just off Kyle Chalmers record there. Like Kyle Chalmers at, at this age, I was actually in his final when he broke that record. And he is right there for a heat swim. If he can come back tonight, let me tell you, maybe remembering that name instead of Kyle Chalmers, that is one to watch tonight. That was a big swim, 23.86. And he swam away from them. It wasn't just in the start. He absolutely swam away from them as heat two starts for the boys. 14 years, 50 freestyle. Lucas Dunn, 23.94 with an entry time. Fantastic start already, leading them through about half a body length on it. The previous time laid down by Hagerbar is 23.86. He'll have to get to that or come close, and it looks like he'll do exactly that. Time ticking. It'll be in the 23s. 23.98 just scrapes under 24. Oh, fantastic work there, Lucas. Son of Matt Dunn. A world world record holder in the 400 metres IM short course. A friend of yours, though, Matt, as good, well. Good friend of mine. I just caught up with him last night, actually. Yep. And he's, uh, he told me about his three boys. And uh, and Lucas, uh, great to see him carrying on the Dunn name. Yeah, it's so fantastic. And I love hearing your stories. Matt Welsh in commentary just telling us about how Lucas Dunn, the son of Matt Dunn, was racing in that event and just previous heat. He topped out the times there, and it looks like this next one will be fast as well. In the middle of lane four, we've got a visitor from Singapore, Ted Windsor Chan, and he's leading out strong. But lane five, right beside him, Bo Metham, it'll be tight. Comes down to the wire. It looks like the visitor gets the touch. All in the 25s and 24s, that one. Some very fast times being laid down here for the final. At 23, I'm very impressed with 14-year-old boys swimming 23s, but a lot of 24s as well. Just sensational stuff. It just shows this is their first ever chance to swim 50 freestyle at an age national championships. And throwing down 23s and 24s, and Matt, you know all too well. When you come back tonight, you love sprinting at night time. You've had the whole day to warm up, and this is when we can see amazing performances happen. Yes, the lights will be out tonight as we move into... Heat four. Off the blocks, heat four for the boys. 14 years, 50 metres freestyle. We saw some blistering times in the first three seeded heats. It looks like Daniel Francis in lane five is leading through about half a body length ahead of the field. A blanket four second, but is Daniel Francis really showing also in lane one, Max Anderson very, very close, and he does touch second, but it will be Daniel Francis with a time of 24.96 to take out Heat 4. Daniel Francis with 24.96, that might get him into a final, and you don't usually expect it in these later heats. They're usually the slower heats, but anyone's game as well, and anything under the 25 is looking pretty good for these 14 years, boys. Yeah, although only the first three heats are seeded, you can make a final from anywhere, and we do see uh, a few people, you know, looking like they're swimming uh, out of their category uh, and they're just really on song. Their tapers work, the rest has worked. They're, you know, nailing the race uh, and it, it can happen. So uh, fantastic swim there. Getting under the 25 second barrier as we wait for heat five of the boys' 14-year-old 50 freestyle to start. Ten heats of this event. Yeah, you'll see that we've just seen on screen the swimmers waiting in the water from the previous heat. They do dive over the top of each other, or in this case, in the 50s, the swimmers stay in the water while the next heat lines up, dives in, and then they move out. It's all to keep things moving because we have so many events here. Two and a half thousand swimmers will make their way through the gates of Gold Coast Aquatic Centre over nine days. It's the biggest event we've ever had for the age championships. And go Darcy! Absolutely, go Darcy <laughs> times three. As the results are made official, Daniel Francis, our fastest swimmer through from Heat 4. Heat 5 on the blocks.
Heat five into the water now. We've got 10 heats in this one, so hold on to your hats. Anyone can make it into a final if they lay down a time, and 24s are being laid down at the moment. In the middle, McMeeking, he's out of USA. He's a visitor, and he's looking strong. The US visitors love to come and contest it with the Australians, but out wide and in lane nine, Keanu Dingle from Starplex is making his move as well. It's going to come down to the wire. It does look like those central lanes got it. McMeeking, the visitor from the US. We hate being beaten by the Americans, but that's an impressive swim. Great swim from Dingle as well, out in lane nine. I will say he should have just lunged there on his left arm onto that touch. He decided to have that extra stroke there in that freestyle. But that glide phase is actually super fast, so he might want to watch that back to learn again, not take that extra stroke onto that wall. Yeah, about 0.1 of a second between third and seventh in that, that race. So all those tiny things that make a huge difference as we have heat six. And they are off and racing in heat six. Event 55, the boys at 14 years, 50 freestyle. Lane four missing from this heat. But making the most of that opportunity looks like uh, Tyler Jones out in lane, or Scott Mayton rather, uh, Mayton Scott rather, in, uh, in lane two pushing through, but it is lane five now pushing through Henrik Ever from St. Peter's Western, and he does get to the wall first in a time of 25.37. Quick little look at the scoreboard there, and a bit of a smile, he's quite happy with that time, and so you should, taking out heat six, ten heats all together in this 14-year-old boys, 50 metres freestyle. Some very fast times in, very impressively fast times in the first few heats of this event. A couple of our swimmers getting down into the 23 barrier. That was uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, three more heats, or rather four more heats, rather. Seven, eight, nine, and ten to go. In the water for Heat 7. It is a splash and dash. This 50 metres freestyle always is. Who can nail a start? Who can get that breakout right? And it does look at like the middle lanes. JD Collins in at lane 4. Striding ahead. Moving over to the left-hand side of the lane a little bit. That's going to help Hunter McKenzie right next to him. But it is JD Collins down with a 25-6-8. Outside lane... Abors Ismaili from Sopak coming in second, the 20, time of 26.05. He had a really strong start as well there. I was kind of watching him as he came through there. We were, eyes were on the middle of the pool, but he just seemed to have open water there out in lane 9. I think that helped him propel forward in 25 at 14 years of age. That's, it's still very quick. It just shows how fast those top boys are going 23. That's unbelievable. It is very quick. We, we very often see these outside smokers as we call them and uh, the distance is exactly the same there's no reason why they shouldn't be swimming fast as well and we are into the water for lay for heat eight lane two deciding not to race this so a gap there but it uh, is lane zero looking at pretty strong as well marcus primdahl also lane eight uh, tyler schaefer Schaefer looking strong under the flags. He coming to the touch. Oh, there's nothing, nothing in it. I can't pick that. We're going to have to look at the computers. Aiden McClymont from uh, Sydney Uni. Oh, with give the us time. a splash. What look. is the time difference? In fact, it's a tie for third. That's how close it was. Second, Darcy Davis, 25 8 6. Tie for third with Ola Falo and Kenzo Gunawan with 25 9 2. In the outside lanes, a 26 double 0. 26 on the, on the node. Uh, 20, uh, Marcus Primdom just looking at all the times, 26.30, 26.95. Yeah, there was nothing in that one. And we often see that with these outside, uh, these slower heats. They all come in with a time very, very similar. There was only uh, 0.05, I'm looking at the times. <laughs> there, there was so many. In fact, four of the boys in that heat 
had exactly the same time going into that race, 26.30, and the fastest qualifier was 26.29. So one hundredth of a second separated five swimmers. And the next two were only two one hundredths off that. That was that was one of the closest races we've, we're probably likely to see for this entire championships. You could swim that a thousand times and you'd have a thousand different results. That is just insane. I don't think I've ever seen a four-way tie. That is incredible. Heat nine is underway. Second last heat for this uh, boys. 14 years, 50 metres freestyle. The last heat had only four one hundredths of a second separating them on entry. And again, we have a blanket across the field. Brayden, I challenge you to find a winner in this. There is nothing between them. I'm thinking lane seven. Chad Peters is looking solid, but it is nothing between... The rest of the field. It is Chad Peters with a time of 25.92 tenths of a second separating first from last in that race. Fantastic swimming here. A big fist pump to the air. Getting under the 26 second barrier mark. 25.92 second through Nathan Nye with a time of 26.34 but uh, not a lot uh, in that. In fact, uh, sorry, Kevin Lee 26.05 and Tom Crawshaw 26.09 so Yes, more more tight racing. One heat to go, and all three of our swimmers in this heat with exactly the same entry time. There's literally nothing separating them. You can't split them, as they say, Matt Welsh. And uh, I'd love to hear, we'll talk about it you know, just shortly, but there are the results from the event 55, 50 minute freestyles we're looking at now. Entering the water on the blocks is heat 10. Matt Welsh just pointed it out. These boys in the water all have the exact same entry time. You cannot split them. This heat may just do that. Matt Welsh, in terms of what can split them, how important is the dive? What are you looking for technically? Well, it's amazing that you can do something so many different ways and come out with almost exactly the same results. Uh, we saw the previous few heats, hundreds of a second separating them. It does look like Sam Reynolds first to the wall. Time of 25 at 3 3. That's uh, much quicker than his entry time. He'll wow. be very happy with that. Very happy with that. He's looked, he? looked around at the board and thought, Is that my time? That's can't be right. <laughs> That's much too fast. But, uh, but it, no, but it you happens, did. doesn't it? In these age groups, and Matt, your son is probably experiencing similar things. You know, teenagers, they can improve year on year. They're growing muscle, they're developing. It's just so impressive, isn't it? It really is. And uh, it's making the most of these opportunities. Those uh, boys, literally nothing separating them. It, uh, the entry sheets that we have, the, the heat sheets that uh, are handed out for this competition, we can see all their entry times, we can see uh, what they've done in the past, and uh, so many of those entries were within hundreds of a second, and in some cases exactly at the same time. So, uh, yeah, very, very uh, minimal difference on the entry, but it's what you do on the day, and uh, some fantastic racing there. As we look forward now, as they're preparing the pool for the girls, 14 years, 200 metres backstroke. Australian record holder Kayla McEwen, 209.60. Yeah, and we enter the backstroke and there'll be a change in our little commentary team. We say goodbye and thank you to Braden Jason for a little while and we welcome in none other than the backstroke queen herself, Emily Seabom. Welcome Test to the booth. Start. Excited to be here. I'm excited to watch this event. We obviously started off with some 50 backstrokes, but now we're in the 200 backstroke, which is obviously one of my favourite races now as I get a little bit older. But, oh, God, this will be good. Macy Sheridan last year had a very good meet, so I'm excited to see her out in lane five. Take your marks. Heat one in the water of the girls. 14 years, 200 metre backstroke. This one is a good one. The Australian record is held by Kaylee McEwen. And we have none other than Emily Seabom joining us in the commentary booth to watch it and to call all the action. In lane five is Macy Sheridan out of Darwin. It's rare to see too many really good swimmers coming out of the Northern Territory these days, but Macy Sheridan is one to watch. She's the title holder from a couple of events last year. Five nights and five golds she had as she was age champion in the 2023 event. And she is a backstroke queen. Emily Seabom, what do you like about her style? 
She definitely has great skills in the water. She has a very low stroke count. You can see out there, her arms are going a little bit slower than the girl next to her in lane four, McClellan. So I think with that, she's just using her pacing here. I, from memory last year, she has a very good last 50. So I'm excited to see that. Obviously, we are in the morning session. So I don't think she'll give it everything this morning. She'll try and save a little bit for tonight as well. But these girls looking very strong in the middle field. Yeah, lane four and three looking good as well. That's Allegra Crean out of Marion. But lane five and four, it's between them. Macy Sheridan in five and Eloise McClellan from Brisbane Grammar in lane four. Lengthening the stroke now across 200 metres, M. Love to hear your thoughts, how you pace each lap. Do you come home strong? Do you send it out fast? Yeah, first 50 for me is using some speed, but not overpowering it. That middle 100 is where I just like to use more of my arms than my legs. And then that last 50 for me is bringing in the legs, bringing in those arms and fastening up that stroke rate as much as I can. So you can see that here McClellan has made quite a move here, but you can see that Sheridan has just started to move her arms a little bit faster. You can see McClellan really going for it in this last 25. Her kick, you can see those splashes coming out of the water there on her kick as she heads down to the last 15, looking nice and strong. This be a solid morning swim. Yeah, McClellan in the lead so far. She came in with a time of 2.20 and she'll be right on that. In fact, she beats it 219.89, it's better than her seeding time. And Macy Sheridan just behind her. There's five heats in this event, so they'll need to do their best to get through to the top 10. This is the fastest seeded heat, and that might do it for the top two there. They might make their way to compete under lights tonight. Matt Welsh, you're also a backstroke champion, of course, and uh, we were discussing before how important the finish is when you've not got too much gas left in the tank. How do you find the strength to then reach back and do, do that last dive underwater and reach the wall? Well, yeah, we saw a fantastic race there. Only three one-hundredths of a second separated them at the 100-metre mark, but a great third 50 there from uh, um, the Eloise Please McClellan and, uh, and just bringing it home. And when you've done all of that work, uh, it does sometimes, you, you sort of just think, I just want to finish the race. I don't care how I finish. I just want to touch the wall. I'm exhausted. Uh, but you do have to think about your skills and you do have to think about uh, that because every single time you touch the wall, it's a practice. And there might be a, a time when it, it does come down to the touch, especially in the 50s. So in that case, yeah, had a little bit of uh, room to move. She'd done all the work previously, but, um, but the touch is important regardless of it. As we see, a very crazy warm-up pull uh, all of our swimmers warming up, cooling down. There's plenty of pools here at the Gold Coast Aquatic Centre. That is the other 50-metre pool. And uh, you'll see the outside lanes there. The swimmers getting up to do some dive practices with their coaches uh, in the middle of the pool. Just doing a few warm-up laps and uh, the other laps, uh, a few pacings. And but you the were crowd there this it. morning, man. You were yes. actually uh, coaching your son in the warm-up pool as we see well, those Well, I was, but uh, M MC Bond was actually in the pool this morning yeah. having a, a paddle. So, uh, yes, uh, we, we know that pool very well. well. We'll get you to hold that thought as we wait for the start of this next heat. This one could be quick as well. I've got my eye on a couple of names. Take your marks. Heat two of the 14 years girls, 200 metre backstroke and Heidi Schumach out of Sopak in lane four is the fastest seeded swimmer in this one. I was just discussing with MC Bomb and Matt Welsh, two backstroke champions and Olympians of, them, of their own, how important the skills are in this event, the turns, the push off the wall, the underwater kick. Matt Welsh, take us through what these girls need to do at the first turn. Well, it's all about energy management, I think, especially in these 200-metre events. Yes, you need a good start. Yes, you need good turns, especially in short course racing. But uh, a great start there we saw from Heidi Schumach blitzing the field in the first 15 metres and then doing it again on the next turn. Only three turns uh, here off the first start and then the first turn. Three turns here, so two more chances to make a bit of a break from the, uh, the rest of the field. Going with her there is Abby Donnellan from Wagga Wagga coming it down to the halfway mark. We just want to keep a nice rhythm in the stroke. Not kill yourself too much in this first 100, but keeping the speed up. Out in the time of 108.54. 
and followed closely behind 109.3. So with two backstrokers in the booth here, it's a great time to have a discussion about being on the lane rope or off it. And these two have strong opinions on that topic, Em. Absolutely. If you're swimming a 200 meter backstroke, you don't want to go from lane rope to lane rope. I think once you hit a lane rope, stay with that lane rope. Try and just stay right there with it. Because if you try and go back to the middle, you can find yourself swimming longer distance. Now, just take a look at Schumach here in her underwater. Look at that underwater. That was phenomenal. You can see that she really uses her skills to her, her advantage. And then she sort of relaxes in that swimming. You can see her stroke rate is down compared to Dolan in lane number five. See the arm difference speed there, Kate. There's such a change. Schumach's able to relax a little bit more in the swim because she really focuses on those turns, which she uses to her advantage. Yeah, Heidi Schumach out of Sopak. She's coming in strong. 220 or 219 is around about where you want to be aiming. 222 might just be enough. This second heat is the second fastest seeding. So you'd hope that Schumach is making her way into the final tonight, Matt. Yeah, fantastic last 50. That uh, high rating that you were talking about there, M, from, uh, from Addie Donnellan, really brought her home hard. I think Heidi Schumach didn't really need to push it, but uh, Abby Donnellan uh, really wanted to, to try and set the fastest time she possibly could. We expect that sort of 15 metres off the wall from our open level swimmers and our, our representatives, but it's so amazing to see it in the girls' 14-year age group. It's filtered all the way down, and you have to be doing these skills down to compete at that top level. Now here comes heat three. And they do dive over the top or in backstroke. They go next to the swimmers in the heat. They stay in the water from the previous heat. It's moving away the... from the wall, yeah, so they don't touch the touch pad, get in the way of that start. So they do ask them to move down to, uh, to the flag, so they're out of the way. Take your marks. Heat three in the water now of this 200 metre backstroke, a favourite for Australians and a favourite for us here in the booth. We've watched some fast times, 219, 220 is around about the standard being set and the marker you'll need to aim for to get into a final tonight. Of course, top 10 swimmers in this event go through to compete under lights. And we're listening to Matt Welsh and Emily Seabom's incredible analysis of the key points of a backstroke swim Matt, we already heard how M. Seabom would like to pace this race. How would you do it? As, as always with these events, you really got to build us. Uh, Jessica Mello out very, very well at the first 50. I would say, you know, sometimes when you see swimmers go out fast, you think, oh, I wonder if they're going to be able to hold on, whether they're going to die or not. But Jessica's looking pretty strong. She looks very settled in her stroke. Uh, heads, uh, he could probably sit back a little bit uh, in my technical mind, my coach's uh, mind, but uh, in an outdoor pool, totally understandable that uh, she's just trying to keep an eye on things. But at the 100 metre mark, she looks very strong. She's not overrating it. She's keeping roughly the same rating as the other swimmers and pacing this very, very well. And in terms of getting on the lane rope or off it, we just sort of touched on it earlier, but M likes to, if you're on the lane rope, stay on it because you cover less distance. Can you explain that to those viewers oh, at home? Definitely. If you're on a lane rope, just stick to that lane rope. Uh, it cuts your distance down. But, you know, a lot of the swimmers are used to looking out. They're used to swimming down on the left-hand side of the lane, right if you're upside down, but on that left-hand side of the lane when you're looking at it. Uh, they're used to looking out the right side of their goggles uh, to see that lane rope. And so sometimes you will see them uh, move over because they, they're more comfortable uh, checking that side of their goggles. As we see at the 150 metre mark, it is still Jessica Mello with a quick little look around on that turn, which you don't often see. I would uh, sometimes dive down underwater and have a look across the pool underwater, but definitely not above the water as, uh, as she tried to see. But, uh, you know, th that's the thing. Sometimes you're out in front and you're thinking, am I doing this wrong? Is, am I pacing this wrong? Am I, uh, you know, what am I doing? But she's done it all right. She's done a fantastic job. We've got our fastest qualifier uh, from this event, Isabel and uh, Isabel Mache and Maya Ostapenko right next to her. But it is Jessica Mello coming down to the touch and doing everything right with a time of 2.22.81. Very tidy time from, uh, from Jessica there. Well, great insights from the Olympian himself. Stay on the lane rope. You've heard it here first, folks. Don't get out of that lane rope. You've covered too much distance and use unnecessary energy. So we'll 
Approach now, heat four of five. We'll wait for those times to become official, but that was 2.22, possibly enough to do it to get into that top ten. MC Bomb was out swimming this morning, probably doing some fast times as well. M, uh, congratulations to you, firstly, for an incredible career that is still going, four Olympics, you're a mum now, five months out, and you're approaching Paris Olympic trials. How is it all going? Everything's going pretty good at the moment. I mean, I say pretty good because I feel like I'm constantly tired <laughs> and I'm constantly exhausted, but I love it. I love being back in the water. I love that I'm able to still do that, even with my seven-month-old son, Samson, with me most days so it works out really well and yeah this morning I was in there in the warm-up you know I had a lot of those uh, 50 backstrokers in the warm-up with me so I was watching a couple of girls you know really utilizing their speed in the warm-up pool so it was good to be out there I was in the 25 meter pool this morning there's three pools out the back outside of this competition pool so there's lots of options for these guys which is good to have and I know we were talking about like looking at kids while you're swimming. Uh, my go-to is looking at the screen. We have a massive screen here on pool deck. So it's at a perfect level for those girls to be able to push off the wall and have a slight look at that board to see where they're coming. So I always love those boards because it gives you a little insight on how the racing is going. But Mello for a great swim with a 2.22.81 out in lane three, sort of doing it by herself quite there, but... I'm excited for this heat number four that's in the water right now. Don't often hear new parents saying that they're tired. Um, <laughs> so to be able to put training on top of that, I'm very, very impressed. Well done. Take your marks. Heat four in the water now for the girls. 200 metre backstroke. MC Bombs just returned to the backstroke pool after having her first kid. Congratulations, M. If you see her around pool deck, if you're here in the Gold Coast or if you're watching home, we'll try and get actually Samson in the booth and on screen. He loves the Gold Coast. I mean, we took him to the beach. You took him to the beach for the first time. He was out there in the stunning beach side. Uh, you know, look at these pictures here. Gold Coast, where would you rather be? It's a golden area of Australia. Sunshine's 300 days of the year. These drone shots tell it all. But uh, tell us how that first beach trip went. Do we have a budding swimmer in Samson? Look, he loves the water, which I love. Um, I love to see that in his face. You can see it when he smiles, when uh, he did try to eat a lot of sand, which I tried to stop a lot of that because I don't want to have to <laughs> clean that out of that nappy later on. But he had a great time. There's no place like the Gold Coast. You've got beautiful beaches, but along the beaches, you've got this pool and you've got some amazing swimming. So I'm excited that I get to sit here again on another beautiful day here on the Gold Coast. Not as hot and sunny, which is perfect conditions for this backstroke, Matt. There's no sun in their eyes. Yes, exactly. Fantastic first 50 there from, uh, from Maley Wilson and also out in lane six from Regan Copsey. Uh, but yes, I can sympathise with, uh, with your kids. I've got six, but uh, I reckon somewhere here, surely one of these kids can be one of your babysitters. Um, there's, there's plenty of opportunities to get a babysitter, but uh, maybe not the swimmers in the pool at the moment. They're very, very busy. Keeping that nice, long, strong stroke here in heat four of the girls' 14 years, 200 metres backstroke. Nothing between the uh, three in the lead now. Uh, and it is interesting to see all three of them in separate lanes, not next to each other. They're not racing um, each other. They probably can't even see each other. Maybe a small little splash, but a bit of a, a lunge and a move from lane eight. Lucy Doyle from Nutterwadding now. She wants to get to that wall first, and she's pushing hard in front of the others. Coming down with 15 metres to go. It does look like Lucy Doyle in lane eight. Pushing hard to the wall, just trying desperately to hold on to the stroke, keep that kick up, head back, one, two, three, and lunge to the wall. First place, well done, 228.34. Regan Copsey second through the time of 228.76. Third, Marley Wilson from Carlisle with 229.65. One more heat. Heat five of five. The girls, 14 years, 200 metres backstroke. The boys turn next in the 15 years, 200 backstroke. We've got another five heats of that. 
But before we get there, we can see the results from Heat 4. Yeah, there they are. Lucy Doyle, Nana Wadding doing a cracking job and bettering her times and personals. We'll look at Heat 5 and see how they go. Take your marks. Heat 5 now, the fifth and final heat of this 200 metre backstroke. And for viewers watching at home on 9 now, welcome in uh, Kate Orman alongside Matt Welsh and Emily Seabom in commentary today. I've had a look, you guys, at some of those uh, contraptions that are hanging off the blocks for the backstroke. Those were not around in your time, Matt. So we might get M. Seabom to explain what exactly they are. And Matt, maybe you can explain how hard it was without them. <laughs> Look, now we have, we call it a backstroke wedge. So basically it sits in the block and you have four different positions that you can have it on. You have two that are below water level and two above water level. And then you have, can have it at water level. Now the ruling is you need to have some part of your foot to be touching the touch pad. So I like to have my toes curled over the top of it. So my toes are on the wall. And you're basically using it as like that kicker, as you can see on the top of the blocks, which gives you a little bit of grip on that wall because without that mat, I don't know how I used to do it. I don't know how we did it without <laughs> that. I don't think I could ever go without the wedge anymore. No, it was always tough. I would have a, a feel of the touchpad during the warm up of my lane to see what it was like. There were stories of people using um, hairspray on the bottom of their feet to make their feet sticky. There was uh, lots of stories of various things, putting uh, surface wax. Um, someone would, you know, uh, smuggle in almost like the sandpaper saga well, with the cricket. Uh, smuggle in some surface wax to put on the um, uh, on the touchpad if to make it a little bit more grippy. But uh, yes, much better, much more consistent starting. We don't see anyone slipping down the wall like we used to with that uh, with that start. Uh, I don't know how we did it without it. Um, I can't really do a start now without the, without the, uh, the wedge in place. But uh, it does help the 50s especially, but this 200 uh, final heat of the girls, 14 years, 200 backstroke. Anna Somerville looking uh, very strong there in lane four. Great insights from two Olympian backstrokers, and we'll watch this final heat unfold. Of course, the faster heats have already been, and 2.20 was just about the market time. So at the moment, Anna Somerville and Heather Nally might be just behind and just out of that 10, top 10 marker to get through to finals, but a great swim. Oh. Heather Nally with a great finish as well. 2.31 is two seconds faster than her seeding time, so she should be happy with that. I'm not a gambling man whatsoever, but with 25 metres to go, I definitely would have put a, a big wager on Anna Somerville. Huge finish there from Heather Nally to come home uh, 0.18 in front. So uh, potentially backing off a little bit, feeling a little bit comfortable, um, Anna Somerville. Uh, but uh, Heather Nally uh, knew she had more to give and did so to get on to the wall first. That was the final heat of the girls' 14 years, 200 metres backstroke. We now move to the boys' 15 years, 200 metre no, backstroke. No, we don't. Sorry, Matt. Oh, we don't? There's, been, there's been a change. Uh, oh. We do have a swim-off. Oh, we do have a swim-off now. I can through. see. The event 54, the girls' 13 years, 50 metre freestyle. There was nothing between two. Summer Groves and Frankie Roberts had the exact same time of 28.13 as we have a look at the marshalling area the boys will have to wait a little longer they are the boys for the 15 years 200 meter backstroke but so the, wait the reason the reason we're having this is yes they got a tied time but uh, they equal 21st place so they will be the emergencies for the b final for yes. the 50 freestyle so uh, only one of them can be an emergency. We can't have both of them swimming in the lane at the same time, so we do need to separate them. Uh, so it's a bit of a, a bit of sweet um, swim off because you're swimming off for a maybe swim tonight. So in the water now is a swim-off 
for event 54, the girls 13 years, 50 metre freestyle. Summer Groves and Frankie Roberts had the exact same time and they exactly placed equal 21st. So they're swimming off for a chance to make it into that B final tonight. And Frankie Roberts is making her move early. Summer Grove also right behind her. It's going to be tight. Roberts has... Oh, please be a tie. Please be a tie. It was nearly a tie. Oh, oh my one one hundred. <laughs> we need another swim off. Oh my goodness, Roberts! Wow, Frankie, you've done it by one hundredth of a second. That rarely happens, and the crowd gives a round of applause. It's well deserved. These two girls have swum that event twice, and you just couldn't split them. Half a second quicker than their time in the individual event, so they both put a huge amount of effort in and. Obviously, almost exactly the same amount of effort. Only one one hundred splitting them then. Fantastic race. I think we need to do more match racing like that. More swim-off, says Matt Welsh. And I totally agree. As we move into the next event, the 200-metre backstroke for the boys, 15 years. Here they come, and there's some big names in this one. We've got two visitors, actually, in this uh, heat, the first heat. We've got someone from Singapore in lane four. That's Kushong Re Regan Cheng. And Chrysander Serta in lane five. He's out of New Caledonia. As they hop into the water and get on those blocks, those starter blocks that MC Bomb was explaining. Take your marks. Event 57, the first heat of the boys' 15 years, 200 metre backstroke. Two internationals in this one in lane four and five. In four, Cheng is from Singapore. In lane five, Serta is from New Caledonia. He hails from a long way out. But Cheng has the fastest time in this heat, 204 for 200 metre backstroke. And at just 15 years old, Matt Welsh, is that anything near what you were doing? I know you're a latecomer to the sport. Definitely not. Uh, great start there from lane four, but also Archie Kreutzberger from North Albury looking good in lane seven. And Finn uh, Morton, no, Angus Wilson in lane one is uh, looking very, very good as well. But it's fantastic to see a lot of these uh, international teams coming down, making use of these, uh, these facilities, these, uh, these competition, uh, and it adds an extra flavour for our local people as well. Coming down to the 100 metre mark. Certainly, and it's great to see a record number of internationals in this meet as we see Chang stroking out long and he looks strong, cool, calm, collected MC Bomb. The head's bopping up a little bit. Do you want to keep it back a little more? If you were coaching this race, what would you be saying to Chang? Yeah, I was just going to ask Matt. I think he needs to have his hips up a bit higher and I think his head back slightly, and I think there's something happening under the water there that's giving him that a bit bob. of a bob. Yeah. Yes, uh, the bob. I find the bob very hard to uh, to get out. It's uh, it's often linked to the kick. It's linked to the rotation. It's linked to the pull through. It's linked to everything. It's a really tough one to to, to go out. But I do agree with that low hips. But he's making it work. He's keeping a, a decent rating, possibly uh, equal or slightly above the others, but he's able to hold it. And uh, that's, at the end of the day, all that matters is making, maintaining that speed. So still looking good through the water. Lane five from New Caledonia. Chrysander Kerder as well looking good, but down to the touch to finish off the 200 backstroke in a time of 208.00, right on the nail. Fantastic swim. Yeah, 208 the first time in for that 200 metre backstroke. And so that's the standard being set at the moment by two internationals who are the Move fastest. But the there's a few stars. ones that in the next heat might be able to top that. Henry Allen out of Bendigo put in a 207 for his seating time. And then in the next heat after that, Logan Reek. There are those times on the scoreboard right now. Archie Kreitzberger, brother of another Kreitzberger, Oscar. There's plenty of Kreitzbergers in the water this week and they all are pretty good swimmers. There's a, a lot of family pride on the line. I know there's a couple of others, Sam Higgs and Luke Higgs, we watch out for every year out of Warringah, the Piranhas. And there's a Piranha in this one as well. Take your marks. So heat two, here they come, the boys, 15 years, 200 metre backstroke, 208 
was the time set out by the first heat, but this heat may just be quicker. In lane four, Henry Allen out of Bendigo put in a 2.07, and the pink, the pink piranha cap from Moringa. Lachlan Davies in lane five, he got a 2.08 in the seeding. So first lap underway, and it looks like he will be ahead, Alan, Hen Alan from Bendigo. Yes, Alan Henry looking fantastic at the one at the 50 metre mark, coming down to the 100 metre mark. Em, I need to ask from backstroker to backstroker, now that they've got the wedges in and you can lift yourself up a lot higher and we see a lot of the swimmers lift themselves right up out of the water, their, their bums out of the water, their legs are out of the water, uh, almost their feet are out of the water, there's nothing touching the water whatsoever. What are your thoughts on that? Because every time I see it, I think if I was doing that, that would exhaust me, just lifting my whole body. It's basically doing a, a chin-up before the race even starts. It is quite st strenuous, trying to hold your entire body up there. And it's interesting, we see so many different ways of doing it. You can see some people don't lift as high. Some people also wait for the very last second to pull up, so they're only holding that for like a split second. So it's quite interesting. But for me personally, I like to be sort of clear of the water with my bum, but not so crunched up and forward because the more forward I've got to go, the more I've got to go back. Yes, so absolutely. I think just a straight back position, like you're sitting with a wall behind your back, just a flat back is the perfect position for me, but everyone's different. Yeah, I just uh, always stunned to see people lift themselves so high out of the water, but uh, looking high in the water, and looking high rating coming down in the last 50 is Alan Henry with 15 metres to go. He's got this race all to himself. Entry time of 2.07 and we saw a 2.04 from the first heat. This will be a tight time as well. Yeah, you've got to get in the, and under that 2.08. Henry will be just about under it by about three seconds. He will. 2.05, that's a good one. And Henry he came in with a 2.07, so it's two seconds better than his seeding time. Great swim there. Almost out by himself. Alan Henry from Bendigo East. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? And 15-year-olds uh, putting down some impressive numbers. What age? I mean, we're looking at the record. The two-minute marker is a barrier. And what age do you expect these guys or what age do you expect some of the girls to be breaking that two-minute marker, M? Yeah, well, for these boys, it, obviously, Josh Ed Edward Smith breaking that that record of two minutes, two, three, I can expect that to be staying around for a very long time. You know, our fastest qualify in that first heat with a 204, we just saw a 205. I expect those boys to be around the 203 mark, 202 mark tonight, hopefully. Take but you could mark. see definitely that Alan took that ah. out hard and he was quite puffed at the end. But these boys are on, this is your third heat. Still a seated heat, so look out for lane number four with Logan Reek out there. He will be one to watch. He has great underwaters from last year, so hopefully he can use that to his advantage in this one. Yeah, Logan Reek out of Norwood with the fastest time coming in. There was a 2.05 just laid down by the boys in the previous heat, so 2.05 is the new standard. We're just discussing how the two-minute barrier can be a real breakthrough for some of these athletes as they head into and keep their eyes on opens and national selections. Matt Welsh, do you have any memory or recollection of when you first broke that two-minute barrier? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the two-minute barrier for me was, uh, was a, a good one to get under, and it's one of those swims that once you get under, you want to stay under every single time, and uh, it's just that mental side. But you made a comment before, Em, about uh, the overcast sky and not having that sun in your eyes, and for this 200 backstroke, I'm sure every single competitor is very happy. That it's, it's hard enough not having a roof, but with the sun in your eye as well, that just adds a level of complexity. So coming down at now, just passing the halfway mark, and uh, looking like a bit of a move there from Thomas uh, Cabanzo in lane five, just taking over the, the top of Logan Reek in this third 50. We uh, said uh, last night the third 50 is the premiership quarter, the premiership lap, uh, and he's done exactly that, leading down with 50 to go. Interesting to see that those backstrokers are coming from Brisbane Grammar. That's coached by backstroker Bobby Jovanovic. So he's obviously got a great program down there because we saw McClellan earlier from Brisbane Grammar as well in that 200 backstroke. So he's breeding some backstrokers right up in Brisbane, which is exciting to see.
Impressive stuff out of Brisbane Grammar. The backstroke cauldron it is in Brisbane. You heard it here from Emily Seabom. She knows how to spot talent when she sees it. And we're trying to spot some talent here tonight in the final. The top 10 will go through. It's all down to times. And Calbanzo touches first. He's got a 209. The fastest we've seen is around about 205. So it'll come down to the other heats and how they pan out. Yeah, you'd hope the, uh, the top two and three of each of the seeded heats would make it through. And then it really is up to those minor placings. So 209 should be okay. Uh, yes, we've had uh, a couple of fast times, but only, uh, only in the minority leading into heat four now as we see those results. 209 down to, uh, to 220s. So cutoff would probably be around that sort of 212 to 213, I think would be the outside markers for the final tonight. Heat four in the water, ready to go. Take your marks. Heat four in the water now. This is slightly slower than the previous heat. The time we're looking for, the cutoff might be about 2.10. Uh, the fastest is about 2.05. But anyone from any heat on any day can beat anyone. It's what we love about the National Age Championships. Matt Welsh was a late comer to the sport. He's in commentary and MC Bomb, well, she was a star since she was young. She's approaching her fifth Olympics. Fifth Olympics, Matt. Do you reckon you can ever do anything like that? I can't even spell fifth Olympics. Um, <laughs> Joshua O'Neill with a huge underwater kick at the start and another big one at the turn. A big swim as well in the outside lane. Uh, Ryan Asher is looking really, really good as well. But... Uh, yeah, I have to say, um, I'm very impressed with that your longevity in, in, the, in the backstroke. Is there uh, any secret, M, that you can share with us to that longevity? For me, it's all about having that love and having fun. I think the more you can have fun and enjoy yourself, the more you're around it, the more you're willing to, to buy into the hardness of the training, the gruel, that it, the, the absolute gruel it can be at times, but... Matt, you have six kids. That's like <laughs> that's what I think going to five Olympics is. So, so you heard the word grueling and you thought six kids. That's, that's the <laughs> obvious link there. Uh, well, speaking of grueling, uh, down to the third 50 in this. Asher Ryan, big underwaters we saw from Joshua O'Neill. But Asher Ryan really pushing that middle 100. He was in the mix at the 50. Uh, you know, not, uh, not too far ahead, but pushed that second to 50 with huge amounts of effort. Really starting to pay for it now, though. You can see the stroke rating starting to slow, the short, shortness of the stroke a little bit. But he's done so much work that I can't see the others catching him now. He's done a fantastic job. But Matt Welsh, you've avoided the question there. You've done a lot of work with six <laughs> kids. Um, and one of them is competing as well in the AIDS Championships. He raced yesterday and we can't wait to see what else he does throughout the meet. I know he's a bit of a freestyle champion. We watch these final uh, 15 metres come down in the fifth heat. Fourth heat it is, in fact. Storming and finish there from Allen in lane six. Uh, Asher just couldn't quite hold on after that huge middle 100. So I bring it back to the question then, Matt. Please. Six kids, how's yes. it going? How are you going? I know you're now head of a coaching program in a swim club down there in Melbourne, and you're also heavily involved with your son's program. Yeah, look, it's, you know, life's always a bit of a challenge. It throws you some curveballs. But, uh, look, thankfully, um, my wife's uh, an amazing mum and uh, uh, manages all of the kids. So we make sure that they all have each of their opportunities, whether it is in the pool for Sam or whether it's uh, gymnastics, whether it's uh, my son's actually just done a TV commercial um, and uh, my daughter's uh, doing for roles in movies and stuff. So, yeah, there's, uh, you know, it's, every kid's got their own little special, special talent and uh, way to, to give to the world. So... It's uh, always a challenge as we see our final heat, heat five of the boys, 15 years, 200 backstroke out. And it is lane six with a huge start. Caden Gibson from Gladstone South, big underwater work uh, in this first 50. Two swimmers from Ballarat Gold, lane two and three, Oliver McCormack and Miller Stott. Teammates side by side, and we're just checking on the update for the score points of the clubs. Of course, the club pride is what this is all about, the age championships. 
We know there are a couple of really strong clubs. St. Peter's Western is a name that comes up a lot. Uh, MC Bomb. In terms of the clubs we need to look out for, which ones do you expect to be in that trophy race? Yeah, I think you can expect that St. Peter's Western will be high up there. I saw that age team photo and it was a jam-packed photo. It was, there was kids everywhere. They have so much depth to... They're in multiple different races from... You have them in freestyle distance events. You'll see them in backstroke. You'll see them in medley. So they have swimmers from everything. But there's other clubs out there as well that are going to be really high up there. I think the Piranhas, we see a lot of them in that bright pink cap. You'll see them come out. Rackley is obviously another one in the blue caps that come out here with lots of swimmers. And Matt, what about the other states too? We have so many other states here as well. Yeah, it was fantastic to see the state relays last night. New South Wales did sort of come, uh, come away with a lot of golds there, but uh, seeing some great depths. I was very impressed with South Australia and Western Australia with the depth of their program uh, really uh, bringing it up to New South Wales and Queensland. Victoria as well got a great program and uh, Pathways program being led by uh, Nick Baker, who's very well known in uh, the swimming circles, a great swimmer to himself yeah, as well. a breaststroker at the AIS. So, yeah, we've got uh, some great swimmers uh, giving back to the sport and, and keeping the... Uh, the the cauldron lit, I guess you could say. Yeah, well, Trinity Grammar is another one in New South Wales, West Illawarra, Valley Aquatic. They all had placings last night in different events. We see the placings come out now for this heat. Lane six gets the first touch. Caden Gibson out of Gladstone South. Time is much better than the seeding time. In fact, it's six seconds better. He should be happy with that. We know that these athletes necessarily aren't competing against the whole field. Many are just competing on their own against themselves. And a six-second time improvement, if it is his PB, that is a huge lift. Yeah, fantastic swim there in our final heat of the boys' 15 years, 200 metres backstroke. Matt Welsh, in terms of uh, backstrokers, can you pick them early? There are the, the summary results, actually. The 10th placing went to Brody Steele, who we saw earlier, and Henry up top. Not too much separating the first four, and then there's a bit of a gap. But um, in terms of the stroke and style, what do you look for in the best backstrokers? Well, backstroke with all of the strokes, it's about the skills. So we love to see a good underwater. We love to see a good breakout, etc., etc. But it really isn't that distance first stroke, the head position, the body position. And said before, the, the hips position, if they're low in the water, it obviously increases the drag. So we want to see that, you know, high body position and making it look easy. And we see people like Hayley McEwen, she does backstroke. It just looks easy. Um, and that's what we like to see. Uh, so getting that hand in the water nice and swiftly. We don't want to see a pause or anything like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's just trying to get that speed up. And we're now moving in to event 58, the girls' 15 years, 50 metres backstroke. And it's exactly what we want to see here, that, uh, that big kick, fast kick, and that fast arm rating with our arms and hands hitting the water fast to get onto that catch. He won of timed finals for the girls, 15 years, 50 metre backstroke. This is what matters, folks, timed finals. So you get one shot at it and it's a 50 metre, so it's splash and dash. Just two swimmers in this one, lane four and five. Isabella and Matilda Robinson and Grace Adams. Out hard and early is Robinson out of Norwest. Her time coming in was 32.51. She may just get close, but Grace Adams is going to try and tip it out. She's strengthening, lengthening, and touches first. She does. Adams with 32.34 on the clock, just slightly better than her seating time. Yes, Grace Adams with a great swim there. It was Matilda Robinson the whole way until that last little bit. Matilda with a very still head position looked really, really nice with a stroke and I thought she'd be able to hold on, but Grace just using her extra length in her arms to come over the top in that last five metres. Fastest heat last, seven heats of this event, these timed finals. Heat two. Heat two of the time finals, and Matt Welsh, you just said it best. The fastest heats go last. So hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. These are going to get quicker. 
Point and I think, I think that's one. fantastic. I love seeing them get faster and faster in the anticipation, the build. So, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of these time finals. MC Bomb, when this, it comes down to the 50, the finish is crucial. What are you looking for in that final 15? I am looking for, on the wall, it, most important, a straight arm. Don't finish with a bent arm. Finish on a nice straight arm. Now, there's a new ruling. I don't know if you guys know about it, but you can basically dolphin kick under the water now from the flags to the finish. We don't see many people do it these days because it is so taxing, that underwater kick. But be quite interesting to see if anyone pulls that out during these age champions or maybe even during opens. Yes, Lucy Dutton there finishing with a straight arm. You'd be very proud of her, M. Uh, finish with a straight arm with a very good time. But yes, you always used to have to finish with, uh, they brought in a rule to finish on top of the water. Some part of the body had to be on top of the water and then they got rid of it. Uh, so yeah, theoretically, you could dive under the water uh, towards the end and finish that off. But it is heat three underway for the girls, 15 years, 50 metres backstroke. Big underwater there from lane five, Ruby Anderson. But it is nothing across the, across the pool uh, Luciana Tabarelli from Phoenix looking good as well as lane two Freya Goldson from Sunshine Coast at Grammar. Yeah, Goldson our Sunshine Coast Grammar. There's two from that club. In fact, Ruby Anderson in lane five. There are plenty of contests in this event, but it comes down to the wire for that heat. The first placing went to Ashby Cliff from Rackley and we know how strong Rackley is, Matt. Fantastic last 25 there from Madison Ashby Cliff. It was nothing between the field and it was really just those skills and holding that stroke as best as she could in that last 15. As you can see there, the times, a half a second separating the top half dozen. Yeah, it's just so tight in these 50s, isn't it? Heat four in the water now and just half a second separated the times in the previous heat. Matt Welsh pointed it out. Matt, in terms of the start, we've spoken about the finish. What's important in the start? A millisecond can matter. It really can. The backstroke start is a tough one to get right. The reaction, you've got to react with the whole body, pushing yourself backwards and clear the water. And the girls have done just that. Looks like a, a strong swim here from Audrey Mack from Trinity Grammar out in lane eight. It's a pretty much blanket for a second, though. In fact, she just gets there, 31.51, and she did almost what you were talking about, Em, uh, that big straight arm and, and a dive underneath the water because she was about half a stroke off and decided to, to lunge for it. But uh, not a lot between those girls. In fact, leading into that event, we had less than 0.2 separating all 10 swimmers. Wow, it is tight, isn't it? 31.51 there for Mac. Eva Potts just behind her with... 0.16 behind and they get faster as well we've got seven time finals in this event and here is the fifth so the fifth of seven time finals the times matter immensely because they are the determinants of who finishes on the podium they get faster as we go this is the first of the seeded heat, so we will see our third fastest swimmer for this event in Kira Long in lane four. It is uh, Kira in the middle of the pool, but also lane six, Alicia Clark from Nutter Wadding looking strong at this point. Yep, Nutter Wadding has been strong in every event, and this one is no different. Comes down to the touch, and Nutter Wadding has it. Alicia Clark, we know that name because she has a battle with Lily McPherson and Asha Ring in this age group across multiple events. We saw her last night. And we'll see her again tonight, hopefully, with that time. So Alicia Clark from Nunawading has a 31-1-1. And that's better than her seeded time. Impressive stuff from Clark. She came in with a time of 31.67 and the 15 year old has just beaten that she looks pretty gassed by it they're waiting for the scores to come up on the scoreboard here at gold coast aquatic center uh, but she'll have to wait and see how that goes in terms of whether it's a top 10 podium finish time finals only the top three times matter we take a look at the gold coast marshalling area the gold coast aquatic center those are the boys 16 years 50 meter backstroke they're coming up later and at the moment we've still got timed finals for the girls 50 meter backstroke and i just uh, want to say 
you're very lucky, Kate, to have uh, to have Em and I here helping you. But I'm very lucky to have Em here because Em's just explained to me uh, these time finals are different. Yes, they're going from slowest to fastest, but it is actually only the fastest heat that is the fully ranked one. So we will have to wait for uh, our fastest qualifiers for heat, heat 7. So thank you for explaining that to yes. me, Em. Every single race seems to be changing, so even I get a bit confused. Well, different, different events are different, and obviously uh, we cannot have a final for every single one. There's just so many... We look at the sixth of these time finals. So six of these seven time finals, they are finals. The time on the clock is the final time, and it will be the time that determines whether you end up with a gold, silver, or bronze. Here comes Emily Holmes in lane four, but lane one is looking strong as well. Kelsch out in lane one, and in lane eight, Emily Tullock from Melbourne Vice Centre. It's going to come down to the wire. Seven in Morris is strong as well. The touch is great. And it comes from Holmes, first place, with the first time that goes under the 30. Yeah, 29.94. Big swim there from Emily Holmes. She actually, you're allowed to swim 15 metres underwater at the uh, at the 15 metre mark, and that's denoted by the little red markers. Uh, and both, and when she swam, both Em and I looked at each other and just went, surely she's been DQ'd because she went uh, past that. So whether she gets away with it, I don't know. I haven't seen any DQs yet, but we're just making a call just between the two of us that uh, that, was, that was well past 15. Well, we'll wait and see any updates from our technical officials on that as we wait for the final seventh heat of these time finals and that was a tight one uh, matt welsh and emily seabom just explaining the rule here that's very important these swimmers must stay underwater and get up before that 15 meter red marker that is on those lane ropes here's the fastest of these seated time finals a couple go under 29 here and this might be the determinant of gold silver and bronze lane six is lily kosh is going strong right next to her mackenzie grimes it's kosh and grimes and first place goes to Grimes. And that's a really good time. It'll come down to who has come close to her. The girls give each other a hug. 29.68. She's broken the 30. That's probably just enough to get the gold. 29.68. Great time there from Mackenzie Grimes to take the first place, as we can see the results. 29.74. We'll get a summary and as well. Here we go, 29.77. So, yeah, 0.2 in the first four swimmers. What have we got? Six there underneath that 30-second mark. Yeah, the, and that was the fastest. But uh, take a look at heat six. There was some swimmers coming up really close and tight to that one. The final one was the fastest of that particular event. And we move our attention now to the boys, 16 years, 50 metre backstroke. Gosh, the 50s are fun, aren't they, Matt? They are, and now uh, now that I know, and everyone at home knows as well, <laughs> the fastest seated uh, last, and uh, not as usual, uh, three seated. So uh, we will have to wait for the final, but it is heat one underway of the boys, 16 years, 50 metres backstroke. Yeah, these are timed finals, so we usually go slower to faster seeding. So it gets faster as we go. This is the first of seven. Don't count your chickens, folks. In lane three is William O'Neill from Rackley. He's taking it out early. Mephin Williams in lane five will be right behind him. It does go to O'Neill. And the time, 28.10. So that's what the next heat has to be. Good swim there from William O'Neill. He did what you did, what you were talking about, though, that bent arm. Did you see that on the finish with bent arm? It was a bit of a soft touch. We want to see that straight arm and hard onto that wall. So he potentially could have broken that 28-second uh, barrier, get into the 27s. It makes my eyes twitch when I see that. It's, I'm like, no, come on, straight arm. I it, thought of you as soon as I saw it because it's one of my bugbears too. Yeah, but it's fatigue that happens to get kids when they do and, and that. And nervousness and confidence on the wall, I think. Mm -hmm. they're, they're scared of, uh, of hitting their hand. But lane two, uh, heat two rather, is underway as we're going through. A couple of uh, late ups in the middle of the pool lane, four and five, doing a long way underneath the water. Yeah, they have to come up before that red 15-metre mark. So two backstrokers right next to me in the commentary have got their eagle eyes on that marker. Lane six going to probably take this one. Alexander Ficaro from North Albury. 
North Albury with plenty of outstanding swimmers. And that time as well, outstanding. 27, the first 27 we've seen. He looks pretty cool, calm and collected about it, doesn't he? Oh, that was easy. Not a problem at all. Big smile there. We Big love that. Big smile. We love it. It's very, very nice. MC Bomb, is there a method to staying underwater for the right amount of time? I suppose you train it all the time, but you can see that marker right out of the corner of your eye. I'm counting my kicks, so I know that about 10 to 11 kicks is around that 15 or just before that 15 meter mark and any more than that you got to be careful you got to be careful too of depth if you go too deep you, you, there's you only readjust. one way to come up yeah, yeah. yeah exactly so you got to so be careful of the depth says mc bomb when you get off that wall and these swimmers look like they've done just that they got up before the 15 meter mark and they got that underwater kick strong and early. Here comes lane six, the visitor from Tonga, Jazz Tehuma. He looks good in the blue cap, and he's probably just neck and neck with Jack Gibson out in lane nine. Gibson from MLC Aquatic. Gee, this one's tight though. Lowry in the end had a touch. It all comes down to the wall. MC Bomb has said, keep your arms straight and get that backward stroke as you go for your underwater butterfly kick for the last lunge. Yeah, and the, there's those results. 28-3-9 from Lowry out there. He had a great touch on the wall because... For a while there, he didn't have it until it came down under the flag. So as we move on now to heat number four, remember our fastest heat, heat number seven. But we still got to watch the times from the early heats too because anyone in these races could win the gold, silver and bronze. To Just adjusting there on the blocks. And we're underway, heat four of these time finals. MC Bomb just reminding us that every single second, every single moment matters in these 50s. They're timed finals, folks. So is the time that determines your placing, gold, silver, and bronze. The faster finals come later. This is the fourth of seven. So you've got to get around that 27 mark at the moment. 27 is the time to beat and get close to. These will be just on that 27.56. That's the fastest we've seen from Ridley. It usually is the fastest swimmer at uh, the halfway mark that just holds on, but he seemed to uh, just pull away from the rest of the field. Jake Ridley there as we see the results on the screen. 27.56, well under that 28 second barrier. Heat five in the water. Heat five in the water now, 27.56 is the time laid down by Jake Ridley out of Cheltenham. That's the one to beat. We're in the fifth of seven, but anyone in any heat, any lane can beat these and take the top. It is a time final, so the gold is on the line, as is silver and bronze. And lane six at the moment looks to be making a move. Tristan War out of Knox Pimble alongside his teammate, Joseph Kim. It's going to be tight between those two. Lane six, it is, in fact... Lane, it's Bell, Jack, lane zero in the white. He's disqualified, sorry. That's, uh, looks like on ours that uh, there's a bit of confusion with the computing, but lane zero disqualified. And Tristan War officially gets that 27.82, will be the first in the top time there. Yeah, we'll get information on that disqualification couple of different screens here showing us uh, times and uh, some of that information going up on the screen but we'll get more information on that disqualification very soon. Twenty-seven five six is still the time to beat. The previous heat saw a DQ and we'll get you more information as soon as we can as we enter the final last two heats of these time finals in lane three. Well, Bailey Harm doing some harm. He's out of the turbo jets and he's putting on the jets for this final 15 in lane four and five. Vogel and Mitchell are going to have a race, but it's lane nine that looks to be striking out late from Orange. It's Thompson in lane nine. 
but it goes to Vogel with a time of 27.53. That puts him on top. Yeah, 27.53. We're going to have to see if that, uh, how that time compares to the final heat. And the final heat is ready to go. Heat 7 of 7. No finals in this event tonight, as we've said. This, is, this will determine our, our age national champion and medal winners for the event. So let's see how that 27.53 compares. Here we go, the seventh and fastest heat of these timed finals. This is the one that matters and the crowd is getting around it too. 27.53 is the fastest time so far and it looks like this one will be fast as well. Zhang in lane three, in lane four, Milner and out wide in lane eight is Morrow. Jack Morrow out of St Andrews, he's coming home strong. Can he beat the time of 27? It's lane four, Milner, no it's Morrow and his time. 26-2-4 will do it. He's your age champion. Wow, fantastic swim. That was just a battle. I don't know. And when, you, when they came past that 15-metre mark, I just looked at you and was just like, good luck picking a winner from that. There's just uh, nothing between them. But must have been a huge finish there from Jack Morrow, our national champion, 26.24. Cash Milner, 26.45 and 26.65 for Samuel Hicks in third place. Uh, and Seabom, I know that was a really hard race to pick, but can you tell from an early part of the race who's going to be a contender? Well, I think you can generally see in the speed of that underwater kick how well they're going to come out of that kick into that breakout. And I think, Matt, prove me if I'm wrong, if you're leading at the start, you pretty much lead the entire way in the 50. Nine times out of ten, hundred percent agree. But uh, there's been a couple of times when that hasn't been the case, and uh, it's it's tricky to pick. But it really shows how important everything is. Yes, the start is important. Yes, the breakout is important. But so is the last five meters, and we've seen a few people fade away, and other people come over the top. So yeah, you've got to put it all together. Event sixty now, heat one of the girls, sixteen years, two hundred breaststroke. Take your marks. Event 60 now, the girls 16 years, 200 metre breaststroke and a big shout out to Lane Zero out of Mittagong, my hometown. In fact, Annabelle Arnott, 16 years girls and in Lane 4 is Julia Remington from All Saints. We've seen a few times in a few different events. She's looking strong early and Matt Welsh and MC Bomb alongside me in commentary. You guys have spoken a lot and I'm fascinated by it about how important the kick is. Often in breaststroke we focus so much on how what goes on above the water, but it's underwater that matters in. Absolutely. Underwater breaststroke pullout is super important. It's a way for those breaststrokers to really move through the water and really not have to worry about moving that body any quicker, but it certainly hurts the lungs coming off that wall. But me and Matt were actually just looking at that Australian record. Must be one of the oldest out there, Matt, 1994. Yeah, Rebecca Brown, uh, actually, that was the world record. She broke the world record at age nationals at uh, 16 years. So, yeah, that's that record's going to stay there for some time. I, I can't see... Uh, yeah, that sort of time to be broken. It was then, I think, broken um, uh, further by uh, uh, by Samantha Riley um, uh, to uh, to take it down even further. But uh, yeah, that was a, a, an amazing swim by Rebecca Brown, breaking a world record at age at nationals. Out uh, well and truly in front, though, is Julia Remington here from All Saints. Really blitzed them in the first 100. Is now just got an assailable lead uh, in front of Ella Mounter in lane five. The rest of the field, uh, yeah, fair way back now. Yeah, mount a, mounting an attack here. Of course, we're moving into heats here. So these are preliminary heats. And the top 10 go through to the finals to race under lights tonight right here at Gold Coast Aquatic Centre. It'll be live and free on Channel 9 now from 6 p.m. So don't miss it. But Australia has a pretty good record of female breaststrokers. We know Liesl Jones, one of our favourites, another one up and coming, Sienna Tui in a different age group. Here comes Julia Remington from All Saints. Is she one to watch? Yes, this, uh, we've gone back to the fastest heat first. So these are our fastest qualifiers for this event. 
And the fastest qualifier individually is Julia Remington there in the middle of the pool. And uh, just, I wouldn't say going slow, but easing up a little bit in the stroke. She's done so much work in the first 100 to 150, now just uh, cruising through. And that uh, was a very nice, comfortable last 50. 234.05 for her, followed through by Ella Mounter. 237.14. Great way to, uh, to start that 200 breaststroke and... Uh, sure we've got a little bit left in the tank for tonight that's exactly right exactly what they want to do matt in terms of breaststroke for you uh, I, I love talking about this with backstrokers and freestylers because it, it usually is the case that the the backstroke swimmers or the freestyle swimmers don't really favor breaststroke was that the case for you Oh, look, I guess it's probably a matter of um, we can never do it. Uh, it's such a technical stroke, and uh, we, we found more success in other strokes. But, yeah, breaststroke is a really tough one. Um, and, uh, you know, M had uh, far more individual medley swimming than I. I did a few I, um, 100 IMs, but uh, I tried to avoid breaststroke at all, all, <laughs> all uh, chances I could. I uh, didn't want to do it at all. Well, I'll get you to hold on to that, though, and we'll ask you about it as well, M, because I'd love your opinion as Thank we watch the much. next start. Second heat. It is the second of four heats in this event, the 16 years 200 metre breaststroke. And Emily Seabom, you're usually known for your backstroke, possibly a bit of freestyle um, breaststroke. You've done some IMs though, and it's usually the, the case that those who swim backstroke don't necessarily favour the breaststroke. What do you find challenging about it? Do you enjoy it? I love the breaststroke because I don't get to do it that much. So when I do, I, I feel like it's like one of those fun events. There's no pressure. It's just going out there and enjoying yourself. And uh, someone that does that really well is Makinda out in lane four. We saw her last night in the 100 breaststroke. We were on record watch. Unfortunately, we just missed that. But she had a great 100 with a 108. So this 200, I'm very interested to see. She's looking very much in control in that middle lane out in lane number four. What do you like about her technique and style? There's always a variation in the techniques between these swimmers. She looks like she spends a lot of time underwater. She's really using her glide to her, her advantage here. She's, she's not essentially swimming any faster than anyone else, but she's really extending through the water with that glide and letting her body take her through without swimming any more strokes. So it's good to see that turn, 1.15.72 in front of Alan out there in 1.17.72. Watch her stroke, Kate. You see now that she's picked it up a bit. So she's going here now, trying to move through that water even quicker than she did that first 100. So almost that neg split that we were talking about yesterday. The negative split is where you have one, uh, one lap and then the second one is faster. So you obviously go negative on the time. Matt Welsh, uh, sorry for interrupting. I was just going to ask you as well about uh, turns in breaststroke because it is often where in turns in technical events like this where people can come undone. Swimmers might make an error and a DQ. Absolutely. The turns, you know, one of the, the few times in the race where your speed is zero uh, and the less time you can spend in that zero state, the better and uh, some great turns. But I just wanted to reiterate uh, Em's point. Yes, yeah, she really did pick it up in that third at 50. Uh, no signs of slowing down at all and uh, trying to use that glide phase. You can see she is fatiguing a little bit. She's not quite getting as far per stroke. Um, and so the legs are probably hurting a little bit now, but uh, she's done so much work to get her here. That is totally understandable. But, yeah, that glide phase is where you move forward. So 2.32 on the clock for Hayley McKinder. That's a great swim. Might just be enough to get through to the top 10 final tonight. Of course, they race from 6 p.m. onwards across nine now. We're lucky enough to have nine now streaming live and free across nine days of competition for the age championships it is so great to be able to bring you all the action at home right here from the Gold Coast Aquatic Centre. There she is on screen. So fastest qualifier so far, Hallie McKinder, two seconds faster. I just had to check your notes, Em, because you're better than me at uh, taking the notes from all the racing. But uh, I was going to say that's, uh, that's surely faster than the first eight, and uh, it really was. 
You can see that Makinda loves her nails. That was something that I noticed about her <laughs> yeah, last yeah. year. She loves to have her nails painted. She loves to have them nice and bright. So good to see that she's done that again for this age championships. It's a bit of a, a callback to uh, Sarah Ryan. She used to love her nails. She did nail art. She did like paintings, didn't she, on her nails? It, absolutely, yeah. yes. Yes, she did like flags. She did the Australian flag on every single nail and the whole thing was amazing. Em, That's you, dedication. You're partial to a nail though, aren't you, Em? Yeah, occasionally. Well, now that I've had a baby, my nails are very short and I'm continually well, biting what's, them. What's wrong with my nails? Yeah. Are you just I bypass me? Looking at all of us, Matt Welsh probably has the best nails in the booth today. <laughs> no. So uh, that's an that embarrassing is an indictment thing on you guys, not to me. Say. <laughs> Very nice nails, Matt Well, There you go. We'll try and post something on the socials and compare, and you can vote at home yourself as we look at Heat 3 coming up. The crowd is getting around us here at the Gold Coast. Little wave on the big screen. We love to see the family and friends turn out here as we watch a beautiful weather conditions, 23 degrees, humidity pretty high, but 23 to 27 Feels like 24, it's not bad, not a terrible arena to be competing and hosting this age championships, is it Matt? No, it's a very nice place to be. So there's a little bit of a delay as we prepare for the next heat, but uh, the crowd very happy listening to the music and uh, taking in the sights. We've even got a few uh, stalls of food uh, that I'm sure people are getting ready for their lunch. Yeah, I saw Matt getting into some of those yesterday, in fact, as we... Take your See marks. the swimmers up on the block now for heat three. So it's heat three now of four in this 200 meter breaststroke. We've got a visitor out of New Caledonia. Plenty of great swimmers coming out of there. Manon Baldovini in lane three. Alongside her in lane four, Sienna Hepworth from St. Hilda's. And Megan Guthrie Quinn in lane five. Those three leading the charge at the first 50. Onto heat three, as you say. And again, another visitor. Fantastic to see. Uh, I think I was reading somewhere before we've got uh, visitors from 20 or so different countries around the world um, and a huge contingent from, uh, from Singapore. So, uh, yeah, amazing. You usually don't see that as much, but, uh, yeah, making the most of the weather and the, uh, the competition here. More than 70, in fact. More than 70, More than 70 internationals at this meet. It's impressive, isn't it? Also in this race, I'm just going to point out Imogen Nolan in lane nine out of Ivanhoe. She's an SB15 classification swimmer, so she also qualifies for the multi-class. And here she is competing with the able-bodied and really keeping up with the pack. Coming down to the 100 metre mark, it is Hepworth, Sienna Hepworth from St Hilda's leading them through. 115.64. We saw uh, so a really big swim in the previous heat, uh, really pushing for that final spot. And another big swim here from Sienna going for tonight's final. What I love about breaststroke MC Bomb is hearing the coaches get involved and some of the signals that they give to their athletes, you hear the up, up, and the, the whistles, and there are a few communication methods. Take us through some of the ones you favour. There are, and I think everyone knows their own coaches whistle or if they are yelling or it's a name call. Sometimes it's, I see them up in the grandstand or behind us and they're waving with their arms, with a hat maybe, even with the program. I've seen them with the program waving that around, especially in those freestyle, they're looking for where where they're going to breathe so they can be right at that eye vision level and give them that little bit of a step up saying like, hey, you need to move a bit faster here. I always listen to my coach for his whistle. I knew his whistle. And if he was only going to whistle at me, though, if I needed to go faster. It was so, like a whip on a horse, was it? Yeah, it was. It was my whip <laughs> leading down to the wall. And here we are as we come into the wall right now. Headburn's pretty much lit led the entire way and she'll take this win. Hepworth 238.47. Really did a good job of that. I saw her up her stroke rate. It was a lot higher than McKinla in that heat just before. So very interesting to see different breaststroke styles come out to play. So we saw a time of 232 in the previous heat, but almost daylight to second. So 238, 238 will put her in the mix in one of those central lanes you would think for the final tonight. 
Uh, it's interesting you say about the uh, the whistles and everything. I've always been told technically it's illegal to do that because you could be using that as pacing uh, for the breaststroke. Uh, so I'm always conscious of, of that. But, uh, yeah, you, you, you hope that Take they can hear marks. you when you do that whistle, but often you still think they can't. Fourth and final heat of this girl's 200-metre breaststroke. And the fastest heat so far was 2.32.43, the time by Hayley McKinder. We're looking at the fourth and final one here. And in lane four is Georgia Bakerwood. But out wide and looking strong early from Campbelltown is either Gerstner in lane seven. This is the slower of the seeded heats. So we do expect this to go a little slower than the other previous ones. But girls in any heat and any lane can make their way into finals with the right time. And in lane two on time is Holly Hembling from Southport. She looks strong. She comes pretty high out of the water, Annie. She's got the home pool advantage here, Kate. She trains here, so she knows this pool all too well. So she probably has her pacing down pack. She has her stroke count down pack. She knows exactly what this pool is like. She's dealt with the conditions. These are, I would say these conditions today are perfect swimming conditions. There's no sun out here so they don't have to worry about the sun blazing. They don't have to worry about the shade factor on different elements in the pool. There's not over, overly too much wind either here this morning so it's great to see these conditions. Hembling will take us out in a 118.49 and really we see a lot of those girls trying to push through here especially out in lane number seven. She's a sneaky outside lane there, so those girls won't even see her coming, Kate. Yeah, L Ivy Gerstner from Campbelltown. They often sneak in, the Campbelltown girls. In lane eight, Livia Chen pushing now for a position up in those top positionings for this final, this heat, sorry. Lucy Clements in lane three as well, making a late charge. She's looking good and strong, but in lane four, Georgia Baker Wood, I think she's got something left in her. She had the fastest seated time coming into this heat. And she'd be probably looking to better at 2.48.38 was her seeding time. We're looking at 2.32 as being the fastest in the entire event. But, of course, getting that touch on the wall in each heat and improving your own time is a goal in itself, Matt Welsh. Yeah, it's a skill unto itself, just being able to, uh, to know where you're at and to, to be able to, to progress from race to race. Uh, we see it uh, done successfully um, and with the big smiles, and it's always heartbreaking to see those uh, that just haven't quite got there, and, uh, and every, every race has that story. Absolutely, and lane four, coming home strong, Georgia Baker-Wood from Cranbrook. She gets the touch, Baker-Wood first, 2.45. It is faster, in fact, by three seconds, and she's happy with that. The big arm goes up to the crowd, almost an Ian Thorpe arm, Sydney 2000-esque. I love to see it. We love that about the Asian national champions. The, the PBs that come through, you can see it on their faces how much it means. These girls, they improve so quickly at such a young age and every year they're bettering their times and bettering their results. As we take a look now at the next event, the boys 17 years, 200 meter breaststroke is coming right up. These are the results. We'll get a summary as well. That's the results from the fourth heat. As we've just seen, Baker Wood and then Pope and Clements probably not enough to get through to that top 10 final. But we'll check out the summary when it does come up. As for me, Kate Orman's going to have a little break and I'm going to bring in Braden Jason back into the commentary box. There are your results. Hayley McKinder, as we said, top summary. Uh, Julia Remington, second. And those will be the top 10 that contest for a podium finish tonight. I say goodbye and hello to Braden Jason. Take your mark. Well, in the water now for event 61, the boys 17 years, 200 metres breaststroke, heat one off and away. Bit of a gap in the middle of the pool in lane five, but our fastest qualifier, lane six rather, our fastest qualifier, Oscar Chrisberger from North Albury. Coming down to the 50 metre mark. It is lane seven, though, Edward Meddings from Ballarat Gold, who uh, is looking strong and a nice turn on the wall straight underneath the water into that split stroke. That split stroke has a huge advantage 
off the wall. And Em, we were just talking before that uh, in the previous uh, event, the girls, not all of the swimmers were doing split strokes off the wall, which I do find fascinating in, at this level that they wouldn't take that advantage to, uh, to do that big split stroke. I agree. I think that split stroke is so important coming off the walls. You're really using that power you're creating coming in and out of those walls and to just hold, all you've got to do is hold your breath for a little bit longer and I know some people really struggle with that, especially in a 200. It can be quite taxing towards it, that last turn, but these boys doing a great job of this. They're looking nice and strong. Brayden, your favourites back out there. Kreutzberger out there in lane number four. But it seems like your outside marker here in lane number seven is looking very strong. And Jack Curvis from Cranbrook in lane two looking strong as well. Made a big move in that second 50. And Dominic Oswald in lane three making a move in this third one now. Oswald having a great swim there in that all-important third 50 here of this 200. Obviously two heats of this 200 breaststroke here. So a lot of highly contested spots here to race under light tonight. Obviously Oswald here in lane three starting to make a little move. You can hear the crowd. I'm not sure if you can hear it at home, but you can hear it here at the pool. The coaches yelling go as the swimmers bring their head up out of the water. It does look like lane two though, Jack Curves. Curves has uh, has done enough in this last 50 to lunge to the wall. It's gonna be close on the touch, but it is lane two with a time of 2.22.98. First the wall, Oswald from Nudgy College in lane three, touching home second, but uh, great match racing there in that last race. Touched almost identical at the 150 meter mark, but the better last 50 as the results are on the screen now. We move into lane two, uh, heat two rather, of event 61. Take your marks. Heat two in the water for the boys 17 years, 200 metres breaststroke. Love seeing how far the swimmers can get on their split strokes. And some real strength we can see uh, in the middle of the pool. Felix Dressel-Debruin from Melbourne Swim Club down south looking very strong at this stage. Coming up to the 50 metre mark. He'll touch first in front of the rest of the field. And as you say, Em, uh, just grabbing that quick breath on the turn knowing that... Uh, about five seconds you've got to hold your breath for uh, to get as much distance as you can in that split stroke. Yeah, also this Australian record is held by Matthew Wilson from SOPAC. 209.90 back in 2016. We can see another SOPAC swimmer out there in lane number five. So must train with Matt Wilson. So good to see that he probably knows a good technique and a way to swim this 200 breaststroke. But we're seeing that front marker 10706 in front of Nam coming second. We saw a lot of changes in the stroke rate in that second hundred in for the girls and we see it again with those boys coming through on this third 50. We see lots of shifts but don't forget that pink cap too out there is Higgs looking nice and strong but his field is looking very good Braden. Yes, yeah, Samuel Higgs, brother of Luke Higgs, who took out the 15 years, 1500 metre freestyle. So those two boys love the tough and long stuff. So watch him turn and burn into this last 50 here. But our middle markers may just have done it. Look at that fantastic underwater work there on the plate. Your lungs would be burning after 350s of breaststroke, Emily Seabom. They are burning, but these boys are showing us how it's done. This is obviously your seated heat number two. So these boys are looking at that top mark of 222.98, just done before them to make it through. They want to be in the middle of the field. Dressel de Buen looking very nice and strong as he heads into the touch. And it will be him taking it out in 221.70, just in front of Higgs. I obviously told you to watch that pink cap and he came back very strong in that last 50, 221.70. 
nine four. Dressel de Buen looking in very much in control of that race for the entire time. Higgs just came back towards the end, but watching those times as we head into the third heat now. We move now into event 62. We're back to some sprints and the 50 butterfly for 17 year old girls. There are four heats of this. We're back to the timed finals. Fastest heat will be the fourth heat of four. Getting faster and faster and our medal winners will be found from this morning's heat. No final swim for them tonight. Our fastest qualifier for this event from Carlisle. Olivia Wunsch, I know she's uh, a favourite of, uh, of yours. Braden, a uh, time of 26.49, the only swimmer underneath the 27 mark and under by a fair margin. Yeah, she's going to be a tough one to beat. She definitely was one of our top athletes last year at the 2023 Championships. And oh, let me tell you, when we touched that wall, we saw lunch time plenty of times on top of that podium. I think she'll be wanting to do it again. As we see the results there from the previous race, Felix Dressel de Bruin from Melbourne taking out the win in that heat and taking out first place for tonight's final as well. Summers ready behind the blocks for heat one. Small delay while they sort out their timing equipment. Obviously, we're in the butterfly. But, Matt, we were talking about the backstroke and how you used to like to swim in. And no one does that anymore. No, I think just for, for time mainly. But, uh, no, pin drops now. Backwards sometimes. In the water for heat one of the girls' 17 years, 50 metres butterfly. Timed finals, four heats. Lola gibbs Beal in lane four, looking strong at this stage. I love the pink cap of, uh, of Abby Hamilton from Warringah, but it does look like the middle of the pool is coming home. Lola gibbs Beal looking strong onto the wall, about half a body length ahead, and it is... Gibbs to Beal with a time of 28.50. Great swim there. Nice drop in time from her entry time. Love a 50 butterfly event. It's all about the kick for me, the underwater butterfly kick, and then maintaining that the whole way through with a fast stroke rate onto the wall. The results from that event. Lola Gibbs to Beal, the... Uh, fastest through. We'll see how that compares to the other heats. Heat two. In the water for heat two. We saw a great time from the previous heat. The girls would have seen that and it will edge them on to faster and faster times. Entry times in the high 28 seconds to low 29. So anything in a low 28 will be a good personal best time. Nothing across the field. Maybe lane six, Andrea Tolentino from Melbourne. But it is going to be close onto the wall. Also looking good, it is Tarman up in lane three. Sophia Tarman from Breakers gets onto the wall first. Time of 28.63, one one hundredth of a second in front of Emily Draper in lane seven, second through. So very, very tight again. Great second 25 as well. It's really important to make sure you use the underwater work to the fastest part of the race, the underwater work to 15 metres. But yeah, really just held onto that high kick rate and continue it through to under the flags and got that touch. But as you said, 0.01 of a second. Everything from the start to the stroke to the finish all adds up. Heat three behind the blocks, ready to go. We saw Alana Torrance in the 200 IM and the 200 breaststroke last night. Now up for the sprint event.
Heat three in the water of the girls' 17 years, 50 metres butterfly. The record held by Isabella Boyd from Nutterwadding, 26-7-3. But again, it is a blanket across the field in this heat. Lane six, Alana Torrance. Great breaststroker in 200 iron we saw, but now in to the 50 butterfly. It's an outside lane. It looks like Eloise Doolan touching first. Had to be shown that by Emily Seabom sitting next to me. Oh, she was hidden by one of the banners here, but 27.78. Only swimmer underneath that 28 second mark. Fantastic swim there and a big personal best time. Almost a second off her entry time. So that was a very big swim. Not sure if she did something and cheated uh, behind that barrier that we couldn't see, whether she had fins on or something, but uh, that was a very big time. <laughs> As we get down to our final heat, fourth heat of four. These are our fastest qualifiers with number one, lane four, Olivia Wunsch. For all intensive purposes, this is the final swim, the fastest qualifier, heat four of four of the girls' 17 years, 50 butterfly, fastest qualifier with a blistering time of 26.49, Olivia Wunsch, and she's already out to almost a body length lead to the rest of the field. How fast can she go? I can't see anyone catching it this time. It's going to be blanket for second, but it's Olivia Wunsch out in front in the time of 26.34, just faster. And again, Hannah Casey out in lane nine. There's something in lane nine making it fast with a time of 27.44. Second home, Jessica Cole, third with a time of 27.45, but it is Olivia Wunsch from Carlisle, 26.34. That is a very quick time and uh, faster than the title holder, Isabella Boyd, from last year by about a third of a second. Wunsch time yet again strikes just about at lunchtime here, just before 12 o'clock, but she was just a standout last year, wasn't she? And we saw her so many times in these sprint races, and... I just love watching her. She just looks so strong. And that touch on the wall was absolutely picture perfect there. I don't think she could have swum that any better. So I was distracted by lunch. I'm just hungry now. Heat one of the boys, 18 years, 50 metres at Butterfly. Just the three competing in this. Alan Hui from Tonga Club, our visitor. Sebastian Roy Bryan from Commercial and Armand Rood from Canberra. And it is our visitor from lane through, Alan Hui from the Tonga Club, who looks to be in the lead, but is going to be very tight between he and Armand Rood. Who gets to the wall first? It is Armand from, uh, from Canberra, 26 to 8, 0.1 in front of our visitor, 26 3 8. Yet again, the skills coming down to who gets the touch on the wall there. Armin Rude, fantastic touch on that wall. It just trust his process there, and that got him in front of our visitor and Huey. Just the two heats for this boy's 18 years, 50 metres butterfly. So this is our fastest qualifying heat. Fastest qualifier individually, Thomas Patterson with an entry time of 23.93. But at the moment, it looks like Kai Lillenthal from Knox Pimble in lane eight, uh, lane five rather, who is uh, pushing it now and onto the wall. I think he's going to get there if he gets a full stroke. Oh, it's very, very tight. Three one hundreds in it, but it is Lillenthal from Patterson. 24 uh, 20, uh, Sorry, 24-2-4 plays 24-2-7. hundredths of a second. Third place to Daniel Boschart with a 24-7-0. Potentially what? just held back on the start there. I was expecting uh, Thomas Patterson to be a little bit quicker. He came back at him there in the swim, but potentially just didn't get the start that he wanted. And I'm not sure how happy Lillian Thor's going to be about that because he it was that awkward situation where your heart's in your throat and you're just too far out to keep your glide going to the wall. So he decided to go for that extra stroke and just touched him out. I think if he got... I'm not sure where he could have gained the extra little like 0.2 of a metre there to get a full touch of the wall. That could have been a sub-24 swim there. He was very close. 
Yeah, your, your heart goes in your mouth when you see them uh, take that stroke without a metre to go. You think, are they going to lunge? Are they going to take another stroke? Uh, my f- thoughts were always uh, on the finish to, to really lunge for the wall. If it was a turn, Start I'd take a stroke, hit high, so that my hips were down for the turn. But, uh, yeah, the, the lunge is, um, you know, is a tricky one because you're basically giving up a bit of propulsion just so that you can hit a wall with a, with a straight arms, which we always want. So it's a tight one, but it did work for him. It wasn't... Uh, it wasn't the best time from uh, from Thomas Patterson, our fastest qualifier, but I think that was more in the start than the finish. But Kyle Lillenthal came home with the win. Moving now to event 64, the girls' 13 years 200 metres butterfly, two heats. Take your marks. Underway for heat one of the girls' 13 years 200 butterfly. Fastest heat first, and our fastest qualifier in lane four, Caitlin Keating, her entry time of 2.24.54. A little bit off the Australian record of 2.13.71 by Lydia Murray from St. Peter's Western. That is an incredibly fast time, but Caitlin Keating uh, still doing a great job, leading them through at the 50-metre mark, going through at a time of 31.12. Closely followed by Neve Lawrence right next to her in Barker. Not a lot so far in it. Caitlin looking uh, looking comfortable out in front, as comfortable as a 200 butterfly can be. It's a tough event. I've only done the 200 butterfly a couple of times. I remember doing it with uh, fellow swimmer Dan Kowalski. And uh, we had more fun in trying to make each other hurt and uh, push each other than, than the actual event. Uh, 50 metres was enough butterfly for me, but... Uh, my hat goes off to anyone doing the Toronto Butterfly. First through again, Caitlin Keating. Either of you guys uh, partaken in the 200 Butterfly, M? I've probably done one in my time and never again. That was enough? Yeah, it was. You guys were talking about that 50 before and almost missed it, but Osborne came in late to the race. She just made it on the blocks in time before these girls started. So she's out in lane number five. So obviously now we do a lot of self-marshalling. So there's no such thing as you need to sit down in this much time before your race and you have to have your name marked off and they call everyone's name out three times. This time it's all about you. You go there for yourself. You make sure that you're there. You make sure that you mark your name off and you've got to be there in time for your race. So let's see if Osborne can come back in this last And sometimes that can be a matter of uh, arriving late. Other times it could be a matter of being there on time and as you put your goggles on, walking up, your goggles snap and you have to run back and get another pair of goggles or something like that. So you never know, but uh, you hope that it doesn't throw them off too much. Uh, But with 15 metres to go, it is our fastest qualifier, Caitlin Keating, in lane four, who has managed to hold off the rest of the field. Looks like uh, second, Jessica Pearson, out in uh, lane two. No, sorry, Emma Emma Ning from from Carlisle in the lane two, second through. And Mackenzie Weath from uh, from Rock City, third through. That was our fastest qualifier, pushing for a time and a lane in tonight's final. A little bit out of breath, nothing too over the top, though. It is 200 butterfly. I don't think you can do 200 butterfly easy. You may as well go for it. Uh, at a time of 2.27, uh, a few seconds outside of best, but you expect that in a heat swim as the results are displayed. But she looks com- comfortable, though. As, she much, did, as yeah. comfortable as you can look in yes, a 200 exactly, exactly. butterfly. But she looks really in control, coming up with those flags consistently at about five metres there. So I'm interested to see what our girls here, especially Annika Sylvester there in lane four. Her seated times are 26. So seeing that a lead marker goes 27, will she want to go hard and get into that top spot for the final tonight? Take your mark. Heat two in the water. Our final heat of the girls' 13 years, 200 metres butterfly. It is lane five, Annika, uh, sorry, Kira Chu from Singapore, uh, who had a great first 15, but already Annika Silva reeling her in, coming down to the first wall. We say they look comfortable, the 200 butterfly. Can never be too comfortable, but I often find if you try to swim butterfly too slowly and too easily, 
it ends up being harder work because you've got to lift your body higher out of the water because inevitably your hips will drop when you stop kicking. You end up being lower in the water. It's harder to get your breath. You end up swimming at 45 degrees and the, uh, the resistance is just not worth it. So I think butterfly needs to be swam with a little bit of, little bit of gusto, a little bit of passion, uh, a little bit of effort. Uh, but it is a beautiful stroke to watch as we watch them come down to the 100-metre mark. Annika Sylvester is looking good, keeping that low breath and that nice long stroke. She'll be looking for a central lane for tonight's final, so her mind will be on just managing her energy but also trying to get the fast time. I've just been watching Annika Sylvester's turns here. Now, we saw her turn and burn. Her underwater work was incredible last night in the 100 butterfly. She came up at the 10-metre mark off the first turn, came up at about the 8-metre mark in that second turn, now, Matt, how important do you think the underwater work is in a 200 butterfly? Because obviously it's the fastest stroke, the underwater work. But in a 200 butterfly, your lungs will be burning. So where's that balance mark, do you reckon, for Annika Sylvester to come up so she doesn't gas herself, but also she can use, utilize her clearly incredibly strong underwater work? Look at that. That's, that's picture perfect. It is the, the ultimate question uh, with a swimmer is uh, what, what is the best use of my energy at any one time? We found Michael Phelps. Uh, going 15 metres off every wall. Butterfly kick is, the, you know, the fastest or second fastest way to propel yourself through the water next to, uh, to freestyle swimming. So in a, in a butterfly race, especially in a backstroke race, it makes it worthwhile. We saw uh, Dennis Pankratov back in the late 90s uh, swim almost the entire way underwater until they brought in the 15 metre rule. So it is beneficial, but in a 200 butterfly, uh, it is tough, but she's done it very, very well. Annika Sylvester with a time of 2.24, uh, so faster than the previous heat, and uh, we'll get that first place for tonight, that coveted lane four, so she's already proved she can swim well in lane four, she'll do it again tonight. She had a cracking swim last night in that 100 butterfly, a 101 for a 13-year-old, so we know she's got the speed in that 100. That is impressive, 101. I know, so I feel like she'll be my one to watch tonight. I don't know if she's more of a 100 or a 200 swimmer, but that 100 last night was incredible to watch. It's her underwater work, isn't it? I think that's what's setting her apart from the pack. She, like, she obviously gains a little bit on those girls in the actual butterfly stroke, but she seems to make her mileage in the underwater work, so I'm very interested to see if she's going to go home and watch some Michael Phelps replays, because if she can channel some Phelpsy, oh, we, we know what he can do. Well, the kick is important, obviously, and you get that underwater work, but it's the whole lap. She's got to kick the whole way, and I think she's obviously got a very strong kick. She probably leads all the kick sets in training. Take your marks. In the water now, we have the boys, a 14-year-old's 200-metre butterfly, the Australian record set by Ian Thorpe. Matt Welsh. Don't see a lot of uh, don't, don't see a lot of butterfly events with Ian Thorpe's name next to it, but uh, he was. He was a fantastic butterfly, a really good backstroker. In fact, he started as a backstroker, um, which I found out in 2002 when he tried to uh, take uh, gold in the 100 metres backstroke in Manchester. Thankfully, uh, someone held him off, um, and I can put that as a feather in my cap that I have beaten Thorpe in a race. But um, it was my race, not his. Uh, but as we see them uh, go down. Uh, for that first 50 in the 200 butterfly. Three heats, and uh, this the fastest heat, and uh, Lenny Grigor, our fastest qualifier there in lane five, and he's taken through very comfortably. We talk about comfortable butterfly, and he's showing that breathing every stroke. Lots of oxygen in this first 50 as they go down to the 100, uh, sorry, first 100 as they go down to that halfway mark. Yes, it will be Grigor, and then turning in lane five, Lincoln Wearing there. He was a number of finals last night. For these 14-year-old boys, it would be their first age national championships, unless they were actually racing above their age group. I know historically that has happened in the past. I know Carl Chalmers, as a 12-year-old, won the 13-year-old age group. So a lot of these boys, it may not actually be their first age nationals, but as a 14-year-old, it definitely is. And as we can see, look at how he's leading the way here. Lenny Grigal could be leading here from start to finish. He's doing a fantastic job. If anything, he picked up the pace in that third 50. He looked very comfortable. 
in the first 100, and I, I think that's the, the real trick. Even the 100, you want to make sure you're back ending, getting out quick, but saving yourself for the second 100. Well, he saved himself for this second, uh, second 100 here. And he's done a great job with 15 metres to go. He's uh, well and truly out in front. He wants lane four for tonight. Three heats. So he's going to make sure he's uh, quicker than the next two. Coming down with a time of 208.56. Second through next to him, Joshua Kang, 212.78. Very closely followed by Lincoln Wearing, 213.06. We'll keep an eye on those times and compare them and see our summary at the end to see who makes the final tonight. But uh, I think that time of 208 is going to be tough to beat with two heats to go. Some great swimming there. Lenny Grigor setting, setting the tone for this 200 butterfly coming back tonight. Great swim there by Lincoln Wearing there in lane three. Swimming out of Chandler. But coming up in this heat, we've got another Wearing from Chandler, could it be a twin brother? Take your mark. In the water for heat two. Yes, Isaac Wearing from Chandler. Following the Wearing tradition, we're uh, getting a few in these races. I think uh, there might be a bit of a family trait going on, but uh, coming down in this first 50 of the 200, we saw our previous winner, at the end of the race, puffing, but not as much as I'd expect. Lenny Grigor did a fantastic job with a 2.08 to uh, set the tone, as you say, Braden. But uh, he wasn't even uh, enough to, to blow out a candle at the end. His mouth was closed, a little bit of a puff through his chest, but had plenty left in the tank. So it'll be interesting to see what he does tonight. A bit of a blanket across the field, though, in this second heat. Do you think that would be a bit off-putting for the athletes here in Heat 2 and Heat 3, seeing that lead marker not look like he's puffing at all. Do you think that would motivate them to go, hey, I've done more work than you. I want to make it look like I haven't worked that hard either. Maybe he was putting it on. Maybe he was actually exhausted and he thought, no, if I look really easy, it's, it's a moral win. But, uh, but taking them through at the, the start is Julian Angus in lane four. Really nice and strong. We saw the first heat bring it on in that third 50 and Angus is doing that again now swimming out of TSS Aquatic entry time of 2.11 mid let's see how close he can get or potentially even break that to get into the final tonight great motivator doing a personal best time at leading into a final knowing that uh, you've potentially got even more underneath your belt and you're swimming the best you ever have second through there Isaac Wearing as we say uh Lots of wearing, swimming, and third through our visitor, Chi Kwan Lawrence Lim from Singapore. Both these boys breathing singles here, just trying to suck in those all-important breaths to get them down the end of this lap. Both looking very rhythmic here, which is what we like to see in a 200 butterfly. You want to make sure you stay nice and in control, and it will be our lead here, here in lane four. Angus, led from start to finish, great swim. Huge swim, 208.44, had an entry time of 211.57. Not sure if he's on faster than that 211.57, but if he hasn't, that is a massive three-second personal best time. So great swim there. Isaac Wearing as well, a great last 50, had plenty left in the tank and was really trying to, starting to mow down Angus Julian there in lane four. Definitely booked a berth for tonight's final with a time of 2.08. As we see the results, a bit of daylight to third, as you can see, 2.08, 2.09, down to 2.15s. So we'll have to see what happens in this final heat. Heat three in the water, the final heat of the boys, 14 years, 200 metres butterfly. We saw a couple of 2.08s casually being thrown around in the first two heats. Our fastest qualifier here, Mackenzie Crocker from A.B. Patterson College. Entry time of 2.12, third fastest through for the heats, but is being very closely matched by Max Mora from SLC Aqueduct and also Sean Sullivan touching third, just all three of them underneath that 30-second mark. Jonah Butterfly... 
is a tough event. We've talked about the pacing and we'll expect to see a bit of a pace increase in the third 50. They're just trying to manage their energy, manage their position in the water and all of them pretty much breathing every stroke, actually breathing every second stroke as I say that, Mackenzie Croker. So uh, he's feeling confident as they touch at the halfway mark, maintaining their spots of first, second and third. A little bit of a battle going through in fourth from lane five and lane six. Scott Robinson and Alexander McKay trying to uh, outdo each other for that uh, potential spot in the final tonight. And you'd want to be in that middle lane, wouldn't you, Matt? Because in a 200 butterfly, you don't want to be right in the washes of other swimmers. I definitely would imagine in a test two in butterfly, you want that clear water out in front to make sure you can focus on getting your rhythm going and your technique going. You don't want to be having to get your arms over the top of the water and overcoming other people's waves as well. Yeah, 200 butterfly, very, very much a pacing and a bit of a, a gamesmanship race. Uh, we've seen fantastic swims in the past. John O'Sieben and uh, famously in uh, 1992 uh, LA Olympics, uh, sorry, 1980, was it 1992, 1986, 1988, I can't remember, in the 80s, uh, coming over the top in the last uh, last 50, uh, but not the case this time. Croker, Mackenzie Croker coming home very well, leading from start to finish, as you say, Braden. Entry time of 2.12, just breaking that with a 2.11.71 and put himself in good stead for the final tonight. Angus in that heat before will take lane number four tonight with a 2844 seeing that will be your fastest qualifier in this 200 butterfly. As we head now into the next event, the girls 14 year olds 50 meter freestyle. Braden, we've got one of our favorites back out in lane number four with Macy Sheridan. She won this event as a 13 year old last year. Let's hope she can do the same thing again this morning. Obviously, with our freestyle events, there will be a 50 freestyle final tonight. Unlike our form strokes, there won't be another 50. She was she was tainted as the darling from Darwin last year, winning, I think, five gold medals. Just leaps and bounds in front of those girls. But obviously, you would... Like, all of us know, when you go from 13 to 14 years, your body goes through a lot of changes. So can she still be in front of the pack here as these results become official for our 200 butterflies. So results there for Heat 3. Mackenzie Croker, a little bit of a personal best time there, 211.71. We'll see the summary of events, our top 10 going through to the final. A 216.26 will get you in. Alexander Dillian, 10th through, but as you said, M. Julian Angus from TSS Aquatic, 208.44, closely followed by Lenny Grigor, 208.56, and Isaac Weering, 209.45. So another tight battle for placings, first, second, and third for tonight. We look forward to that event, but we now look forward to event 66, the girls, 14 years, 50 metres freestyle. As you guys say, Macy Sheridan, fastest qualifier through in this event. The fastest heats first. There are eight heats of this event. Off and racing the 14-year-old girls in the 50 freestyle. Our fastest qualifier for this event, Macy Sheridan in lane four. A long time underwater there, but coming up even with the rest of the field. This is going to be a touch in it. Oh, I think she's made, maybe a fingernail ahead of Maya Zunka from Griffith University right next to her. Ma Macy Sheridan on to the wall and she does get there at a time of 26.52. Closely followed by Zunka next to her with a time of 26.81. She was a long time under the water there, Macy. Um, and, and came up, you usually see that as a big advantage, which came up pretty much even with everyone. Maybe uh, a little bit more to be done with that start, but uh, a good swim nonetheless. Yeah, it's a funny thing. We see in the ton of butterflies how important the underwater work is. But in 50 freestyle, you do want to get up and moving as fast as possible. You don't want to have that bowl to catch up to you. Heat two in the water. They would have seen the swim from just then, and that will propel them to bigger and faster things 
top 10 will be going through to the final tonight. And as we expect with a 50 metre race and especially a 50 freestyle, not a lot between the field at this stage. Eloise McLennan from Brisbane Glamour, uh, Grammar, sorry, from St Andrews. Uh, no, Alyssa Lawson, my apologies. Alyssa Lawson, a visitor, 26.77. Alyssa Lawson from St Andrews, closely followed by Eloise McLennan, 26.98. It's a pretty good sprint. Uh, yeah, very sprint good. It, skills it, it was nothing across the field. I actually struggled to see who was oh. who was doing what of that one. My apologies. <laughs> it is just a blanket. Twenty six seven seven twenty six nine eight. As we go into heat three. Heat three in the water. Last of our seeded heats and a big start there from lane five from Fiji. And here are Mc, uh, McCutchinson, McCutcheon rather, for a Fiji club. An entry time of 26.79 and looks like she'll well and truly break that. She's up and stroking half a body length ahead of the rest of the field down to the wall. And it is lane 5, 26.75, just in front of her entry time. Closely followed by Jocelyn Plummer, 27.13. Sensational start, wasn't it, Matt? She just led that way and said, catch me if you can. That's how you do a dive. She kind of perfectly timed the underwater speed, camped when she needed to come up, and then held onto it and rode that way forward. That's, a, that's how you start a 50 freestyle. Yeah, there's no pacing in a 50. You just got to go for it. Off and racing in heat four of the girls. 14 years, 50 freestyle. Out of the seeded heats now but still some very tight racing. Less than 0.3 of a second is separating all of these girls coming in on their entry times, but it does look like lane six, who's moved slightly ahead from Brusselton, Brooklyn Rain, looks like she'll be first to the wall. Lane two as well is looking good, but it is Rain and McNaught next to her in lane five on to the wall. 26, uh, 27, four, seven. Not a bad time getting underneath that uh, that 28 and holding on strong. So a small personal best time there based on entry times. There are eight heats for this 50 freestyle for 14-year-old girls. This is heat five. A few missing swimmers in the middle of the pool, which you don't often see but it is an opportunity for these outside lanes to, uh, to set a PB, to really go for it and come away with a place from their heat swim. And doing just that out in lane zero, looking very, very good. Taru Kroko from St Andrews, blistering start and hard to the wall. Can she hold on? Getting a bit of pressure from lane seven as well, but she can. Kroko comes away with the win, 27.45. Very big swim, about half a second personal best time. Big smile and a wave. Thank you. Well done. Brilliant work. Lola Pittams as well, second through. So some more fast swimming there. I love these 50s. They're just so much. You get so much information in a very short amount of time uh, and some great stories as we see Heat 6 up on the blocks. Away and underwater. Nice big breakout stroke almost in unison. This heat six of eight. Looking really good in the middle of the pool. Amelia Basic from Kent Town. But coming through now, Isabella Espetito from St. George. Looking at the goods for that first touch on the wall in lane five. And she gets us. 27.88 for Esposito. Bit of a slap on the water there, but a great swim there out of lane five in Esposito. Wow, these girls, the caliber they're swimming at at 14 years of age is absolutely incredible. And a number of St. Andrews athletes as well doing quite well. They must have a bit of a sprint program, or maybe they're just watching Carl Chalmers, who's actually made the move up the train up in St. Andrews. So I guess if you're going to learn sprinting, that's the one you want to want to model your 50 freestyle off. Yeah, great program up there in uh, at St. Andrews. Led through by uh, one of my 
pass to backstroke, friends, with, uh, with Ashley taking over the reins at St Andrews and doing a great program. Heat seven of eight in the water. Lane four, Audrey Bryan from Mackay Cyclones and Zara Jeffrey in lane five. And it is Zara Jeffrey with a big start from the rest of the field. Also lane one, Caitlin Ord from Melbourne. But it is a blank between one, five and six. Emily Swan from Moringa looking good as well. Down to the wall. What can you see, Braden? I cannot see a thing. What a touch on the wall there. Did the piranha get it? It is Swan first. Emily Swan from Moringa with a pink cap. We love the pink cap. Looks up at the scoreboard. 27-8-3. If you can't see, just letting you know as we see the results. Emily oh. Swan, 27-8-3. Three of the girls getting underneath that 28 second mark. Tell you what, I want one of those pink caps. I think I think we'd They're all great. look pretty, pretty in pink. Final heat, heat eight of the girls' 14 years 50 meters freestyle. We've seen some great racing from the middle lanes, from the outside lanes, and now it is lane two. Zoe Wright from the Lakes College looking strong at this point of the race, also looking good at lane six. Karma. Famey, but it is nothing between them. Who's going to get to the wall? Who cut their fingernails the shortest, the longest? It is right outside. Zoe Wright from the Lakes College with bragging rights for our final heat of the girls. 14 years, 50 metres freestyle. We look at the results from that heat, and that was a timed final. So, summary. Summary for moving forward for tonight. Macy Sheridan, fastest through 26.52. Very quick time. But a bit over her PB. She was uh, tainted as 26.06, I believe, uh, on paper. A little, little so. bit over, and I think that was uh, mainly in that, that start, as mm. we uh, discussed. But, uh, but yeah, more opportunity to, uh, to make up for that. As uh, the crowd prepare for the next event, event 67, the boys 15 years, 50 metres freestyle. Heat one of seven behind the blocks. And they're away for heat one of the boys 15 years, 50 metres freestyle. Fastest qualifier, Max Hewitt from Henling Grange with an entry time of 24.04. And it is Max who's looking pretty good at this stage, lane four in the, the middle of the pool, but not a lot between them. I challenge anyone to pick a winner from this. Four, five, three, who gets to the wall first? No, it is three. Crisanda Cerda from, Cerda from New Caledonia Club, time of 24.44. I love the number four. And uh, he's brought it home. Max Hewitt there with a the time of 24 4 6, 4 one hundredths separating the top three. Heat two. After seeing a very close race, only 4 one hundredths separating our top three in the previous race. Our Heat 2 will know that every single stroke, every single kick counts and uh, they're making the most of it. Lane 4 looking good. Fing Morton from Somerville House strong to the wall. He's got just a small lead on the rest of the field and it is Morton 24.21, marginally quicker than the first heat. He'll be loving the fact that he's uh, got one over that technically faster heat. Bit of a high five for his uh, compatriot and competitor. You can see the times there, 24-2-1, making it through. Heat three. Often racing for heat three. Big start there from the pink cap. We love the Warringah pink cap. Lachlan Davies with a big start. Slightly behind was lane five, Fred Hassel, but he's starting to come through now. On the other side, lane three, J. 
Jay-Z Chen from Ravensby Workers is looking good as well, but I think it is the pink cap who has the lead on the field. And it is, as you say, Brayden, pretty in pink, 24-1-7. Yeah, definitely. That's looking very strong to come into the final. We want to see the pink caps in the final. We'll see all the caps in the final. But that's a fantastic swim. That sits him in first for this final in lane four, the last of our seeded heats. But as we've seen, we can't wait on these later heats that aren't seeded because these boys can pull out PBs from anywhere. So 24-1, it's, it's a tidy time, but it's not safe. Now, Em, I'm going to come to you in a sec because you're frantically writing notes and I want to know what you're doing. Heat four underway and up early, lane six. Joe of Harwood from Nudgee College looking strong, but it is at the middle lanes, as usual, lane five looking very fast. Joshua Mason from NCA. Lane seven also looking really good. Kashi Low, who's going to get to the wall? It's going to be very, very tight. Yes, a good pick, a tie, a tie. This is what you're writing down, Em. You're doing a great job. Joshua Mason and Kashi Low with an equal time of 25.07. As we see the results on the board. Now, you have been writing frantically down all these times, but what can you, what, what can you do out of this? Give me a Rain Man moment. Well, what I've worked out is 24 is obviously going to make the final. Whether that's 24-6-2, like we saw third place in that second heat, but it's looking awfully close for tonight's final. It is very, very close for tonight's final as the boys for heat five are in the water and racing for pride. Anyone in these races has a chance to make the final, but we looks like from M's calculations, we need to be in those 24s. So how close can we get? Coming down to the touch, looks like lane six, Lane six, yes, Max McKenzie, 24, 8, 4, 8, 5. How's that looking in the mix? It's going to be close, isn't it? It's going to be so close for tonight's final. I'm so excited for this one. It's probably going to be half a second from first to tenth spot. Uh, we see this so often in these 50 races. I genuinely couldn't believe it before. I was having to rub my eyes to see whether it was right, but there was 0.02 of a second, I think it was, or 0.03 of a second for 10 people. I just couldn't believe four of them at the same time. Uh, it's tight. just so tight. It's so tight. Oh, and I've goodness. got a bit of a sweat up because we had two boys equal with a 24-4-4 and I'm just hoping that they don't <laughs> the have a the swim The cut-off is 24 <laughs> <laughs> Heat number six now at the blocks. Like we said, this is going to be tight to make it through to the top ten positions. So we'll hold our breath and wait for the times on this one. Second last heat. Heat six of seven for the boys. 15 years, 50 freestyle. We've seen some very, very close racing. We saw a tie just before. And we've got more of the same. Come on, M, pick a winner from that, seriously. Either put your washing in there or pick a winner. Well, I need to do my washing, so can I chuck it on in the pool? But I reckon lane number six has got it just. Yeah, lane six really coming to the fore. Shaberis, Skaberis uh, in lane six. Nice pick, M, 25.09. Really came to the front in that last 15. There was nothing in it before that from the St. Kevin's program down in Melbourne. That bright yellow cap got my attention and he swam that all the way through for that win, 25.09. Probably not enough to make that top 10 spot tonight, but a very good swim and a PB on the books. So as we heat with, as we go into heat number seven of seven of this event. Yeah, last heat, last chance to make the final for tonight. We know a 24 low will make it. In the water for our final 50 freestyle for our 15-year-old boys. And great to see the pink cap back with Ringer in Charlie Cook in lane six. But it is an absolute manic swim. It, it does look like lane seven now. I actually don't have a name for lane seven, but lane seven coming through very, very strong. 
How fast can he go? He touches the wall, 25.21. Great sim there in the final, final 50. We love a mystery swimmer, don't we? Um, oh, it is a mystery swimmer. A mystery swimmer came out of the bleachers there, but like, Scooby Doo to work out. Who's, just, uh, who's let's just say it was a it was a PB. Great swim. I, th <laughs> I think it was a sensational well, swim. We can regardless, make up any, anything we want. Donald Trump with a great time there <laughs> to uh, to come through. We can see the uh, the summary will be coming up. Very shortly, Lachlan Davies, 24-1-4. How were your times comparing? How does this go? We, we had that tie, tie for third place going through, so that's safe. 24-6-0 made it through, Charlie Austin. So we, we knew from your maths, M that 24 low would make it, and it well and truly has. Yeah, half a second. I was pretty spot on with that, you Matt. Were. Half a second between first and tenth spot. Wow, I can now take a breath and I'm feeling a lot better as we head now into event 68. The girls, 15 to 17 years, 1,500 metre freestyle. Look at that record. I said earlier that that was the oldest record, but I lied. 1978. 1978. It's, it's so old. That record is in black and white. That is impressive. I'm going to leave you to, uh, to manage this one. Thank you so much, Em. Thank you so much, Braden. I'm going to hand over to Kate. Best of luck. For the girls, obviously. Take your marks. And we're here for our second heat here. Our first of our time finals. Obviously, our fastest 10 girls will be coming back to contest under the lights tonight. But that doesn't mean that these girls here can't sh rattle the tree to get a podium. These times do count. And oh, I'll tell you what, if you want to make something count, Head along down to the Gold Coast or north to the Gold Coast because the weather has been absolutely sensational. If you're bored anywhere across Australia, go and have a look at Experience Gold Coast and I can guarantee that if you're not interested in the swimming, which you definitely should be if you're tuning in, you can find something to entertain you here on the Gold Coast. But if you love swimming, strap on in, 1,500 metres this is swimming at its finest. I don't think anyone's watching who's not interested in swimming, uh, Brayden, but I think we're all interested as well in the Gold Coast, Queensland, the venue, a stunning arena for the 2024 Age Championships. We just saw on screen some of the beautiful sights and sounds, and spells and tastes you can experience when you're here on the Gold Coast. It's what we love to see as well. When everyone comes up, they bring their team. I just had a little chat with some of the clubs as I was walking around during my break from commentary, and I met the lovely people out of Mittagong Swim Club. So big hello again. Alice Arnott is racing in the finals tonight and it's so fantastic to see some of my locals supporting their locals as well up here as we look at now the 15 to 17 years 1500 metre freestyle. This is heat two of three timed finals. So time finals as a reminder to everyone watching along. They are crucial and it is just one swim to determine the podium finishes. So the best time wins, and they can come from any heat, Brayden. Exactly right, it can come from anyone, especially, it's a great sighting out there from Emily Holmes in lane four. She's trying to set the scene here, set the tone early, leading the way, but let me tell you, lane six is not letting her go anywhere, anytime soon. Plan for having a great swim. Lane four and lane five leading the way at the moment. Yeah, Sienna Nicholson out of St. Peter's Western in lane five. And, gee, St. Peter's Western, they know how to train some of those longer-distance events, don't they? We know Ariane Titmus trains out of there, and there's a couple of others that we have seen in the international arena. But what is it about St. Peter's Western? How do they do it? It is the 400s, the 800s, the 1500s that they excel. Brayden, you're a 400-metre swimmer. What is it about that place? I think when you're doing these long, grueling races, it helps to have a great culture and a great group of people to train in because these girls, they're swimming 1,500 metres and sometimes you're doing some really long sets. These girls wouldn't be... They'd be used to doing like some 10-kilometre sets some days on those longer days. So you're spending many hours in the pool. It helps having training partners alongside you that you know are here to help push you forward and to also hold you accountable because when you're training in these long sessions, it's pretty easy just to to go, nah, you know what, I'm not feeling that good today. I might take it a bit easy, but when your training partner pulls you up and says, no, Brayden, come on, it's time <laughs> to push. We're coming here to National Age Championships in a couple of months' time. 
let's come in, let's go into it together, let's go into the Hurt Locker together. <laughs> and I think that helps. You, you see some Peters West, and we've seen the Ariane Titmuses, and then we're seeing Molly O'Callaghan start to make the move as an age grouper, coming on through. I know, yep. she, she can just swim absolutely yeah. I'd love to see Molly O'Callaghan have a crack at a 1500, because I can almost guarantee she could check... Shake the tree on the on an Australian title, oh, I reckon. Well, there you go. Message out to Dean Boxall. Uh, Braden Jason reckons Molly O'Callaghan should be contesting the 1500 as well. But interesting note, I've had an update in from the analytics as well. As of this morning, the top team, the top club in the competition of the 2024 Age Championships is none other than St. Peter's Western. 232 points is the club score at the moment. For St. Peter's Western, those have not been calculated and updated after today, so they will do after the finals and we'll keep you updated as they come through. Rackley is currently in second, just behind on 201 points, and Rocky City is back in third on 184. Then Griffith University, Nana Wadding, and a couple of others. Of course, you can keep updated with those point scores on the live results on Swimming Australia. Do any of those results surprise you, Brayden? I, I, I wouldn't say I'm surprised, but some people at home may be surprised in hearing Rocky City there in third. But Central Queensland, they just breed them tough up there. The Mackay Cyclones, we've seen them win a number of medals, produce some fantastic swimmers in Logan Power, one of our Paralympians. But I think they just breed them tough in North Queensland. And I think sometimes when they do get a bit older, they do tend to move down to the Gold Coast, the Sunshine Coast, or your Rackleys to train alongside St. Peter's Westerns as well. But I think Rocky City is starting to prove that they can keep them home in Rockhampton because they're obviously creating a great culture there that's breeding some fantastic results. And as you can see, they're well, top three in the country and competing well above their weight. It's great to see. Yeah, and out of St. Peter's Western, in fact, is Sienna Nicholson in lane five in this timed final. She came in with a time of 17.35. Not the fastest in all of these time finals, but anyone in any heat any time final can really make a play for the podium and that's what's so exciting about these as we see Nicholson make her move still a fair way to go in the 1500 19 laps on the tickers on the side of the pool five minutes in it's a race that's more than 15 minutes long MC bomb how would the girls be feeling now are they settling into their stroke at this point obviously we know that morning swims aren't as fast as night swims but you've got to remember that they're in this final tonight, in the time final, we only have two girls that are 15. We have two girls that are 16. Each age group is going to win a medal. So the girls that are 15, 16, 17 in this heat right now need to push their times as much as they can this morning. So I know they're probably hurting. I know they're trying to build into this race, but they, at no point can they rest up, can they save themselves. Because we're talking about an age champion medal here we're not talking about just coming back tonight we're talking about this is our chance for a medal so they cannot ease up at all and they really need to build through this race nice and strong any chance you recall your first age championships what was the one the event that you got your first gold in i was 12 years old it was the 100 backstroke, and I won in a time of 104 something. Wow, that's pretty good memory of way back in the day. I only remember it because it made me um, then get picked on a team called Trans Tasman that travelled through Australia. It went to three different places. One of the places we stopped at was Wagga Wagga, and we had to race against New Zealand, and two. the Australian team was split into two. And the only reason I remember is because I was so young. I had no friends on the team. I didn't want to oh. leave my mum and dad. I was, a bit, I was a bit of a homebody. So, yeah, I was a bit sad on that trip. <laughs> but I, had, I remember having so much fun. And I think at the start, yeah, I was nervous. I didn't really know anyone. But at the end, I had so many friends. And each year I wanted to come back and make that team again so I could go away with these kids and travel. Yeah, the camaraderie in swimming, I really think it's underrated. A lot of people say swimming is you and the black line, but it's not. These are team events. We've just spoken about how the club culture comes through in these age championships. But even up to international levels and in seniors, M, the green and gold is known as a culture that sticks together together and just speak to to that culture in terms of swimming Australia it's been a strong one over the years it has been I think we saw it a lot in Tokyo we obviously couldn't have our family and our friends go out because of COVID 
and making things very difficult there. So there was no crowd whatsoever in the pool, which is highly unusual for Olympics to have no one in the stands. They even played fake crowd noises when we came out. But (laughs) the thing that I remember about that is that team was like my family. I had teammates on the side cheering me on the whole time I raced. I was cheering on teammates when I wasn't swimming. We just became that second family, and that's the culture that we love in swimming. That's the culture we love in Australia. That's who we are as people. You know, we thrive supporting other people, and this is what we see at Age Nationals too. We see the friends and family up in the stands for hours on end watching these guys compete. So make sure if you are here on the Gold Coast, you're cheering. If you're watching on home, you know, tag the people in Instagram, tag them on Twitter, tag us. Let us know if there's anything else you would like us to talk about. If you have fun facts, we love to hear fun facts. We don't get enough of them. And Brayden, what do you got for us? Now, I want to go back to Tokyo because it was such a weird game, wasn't it? We had two weeks of isolation before heading into the competition. I know me on the Paralympic team, we couldn't actually leave our big tower in the Tokyo Village because a lot of our athletes were immune compromised. So we didn't want to have any risks. And you would have been very similar, very limited to where you could go in the village. And then we had two weeks quarantine on the back end to just come back into the country. It just shows how well we did in Tokyo in both the Paralympic and Olympic teams because we literally only had our teammates to get us through that. And I think that shows if our family and our friends weren't as strong or as close-knit, we probably wouldn't have had those great results, would we? I agree with you, Brayden. We supported each other the entire time, and I know that you guys probably felt it at the Parachamps, and I know we felt it too in Tokyo. So... I think we also felt the support, even though our friends and family weren't over there, we felt the support coming through Australia, through the lines, through the TV. We, we felt that support. And I don't know about you, but I've, I've never had a competition like that where you've had no one around you and you felt 100% secure with what's happening. It's yeah. so nice to hear, isn't it? Sorry, Brayden, I was just going to say, Em, as well, there's um, something special about wearing the green and gold with your teammates, but then when you get in the pool, they become your competitors. And that's what these athletes today are facing and across nine days. They're coming up here on the Gold Coast with their teammates and their club, but then facing off against them for medals. How does that change things? Oh, Brayden, I, I don't know about you, but it's like you sort of can switch off very quickly. It's like behind the blocks... No one's your friend. After you finish, you touch that wall, it's like, okay, everyone's friends again. Brayden, I don't know. How do you feel? It's nothing personal, though, is it? Because we all put in the work together, and it's not like we're having to fight and wrestle each other. It's it's swimming. Who can swim up and down a pool, pool faster? It's not life or death, and it shouldn't break up friendship, should it? Because I know one of my groomsmen... He was on my bridal party, Jacob Templeton. He picked me for my first international medal at the Commonwealth Games. And I was genuinely just stoked for him. I was obviously disappointed with my swim. There was 0.13 of a second between gold and fourth place. So it was a nail-biting race. And it's nothing personal. It's just great racing. And when I like to say there's no friends on the start line. I think that's how it, everyone should take it. But as we say, I love touching the water. I love giving a friend a hug or giving him a high five or all that kind of stuff. We love seeing it because... I think that's, that's what makes a great competitor, isn't it? Someone who can flick that switch and go, OK, it's race time, let's go. Yeah, these girls doing a great job of this 1,500. Obviously, a 1,500 in the morning is not an easy swim, but these girls are looking quite fine here. Blanford leaving, leading us through 12-12 yep. there in front of Holmes, 12-14. As we head through, you can see... Not on TV, but if you're here at the pool, you can see that they have lap counters to help the girls count their laps so they don't have to worry too much about staying focused. I know for me, I struggle just 200 metres trying to count that these days. And we also listen for that bell in that last 100. So it's good to have those reminders for them. But they're trying not to look, lift their head up and look how many laps they have every single turn. It's only when they need to. Yeah, it's Ingrid Blanford out of Bunbury, 16 years old. And just a reminder, everyone watching at home, we are in heat two of three timed finals. And the first heat, if you're wondering where that went, heat one is swum tonight in the evening final session. So it is a time final, though. If Ingrid Blanford can put up a good time, she will be contesting those medals. 
but the faster times we anticipate will be in the final session tonight. Anything can happen though, so keep your eyes on all those lanes. Lane six out early at the moment, Braden. Yeah, it's great to see Blanford just kind of have, she took it out from the start, was looking really strong. We did see lane four swimmer as well taking out Emily Holmes, but Blanford just kind of seemed to want to take it out and has held her own out there. And this is why and how 1500, 1500 swims should be swum. She's showing a textbook swim. We'd love to see athletes take it out hard and hold on as hard as they can because it's a 1500, it's going to be tough. And I think only the toughest of the tough get in there. I think Blanford's showing why she's be, being one, being touted really right now as one of our top 1,500 swimmers in the country. Well, speaking of tough, Brayden, you were the first to swim the Coolangatta Gold as a Paralympic swimmer. Uh, just tell us about that journey. Yeah, it was always something I really wanted to do throughout my swimming career. I grew up doing surf lifesaving, but being legally blind with 6% vision Obviously, surf lifesaving was a bit difficult for me, so just following the black line was the best, and that got me onto my uh, two Australian Paralympic swim teams, eight Australian swim teams as well. But once I took a year off after Commonwealth Games, I thought I'd come back to surf lifesaving, and I took up surf ski paddling, which is the big 18-kilo, 4-metre-long surf skis you see paddling out, and I thought I'd take on the Coolangatta Gold. And that was a very long race. It was made up of a 12-kilometre surf ski race, like a surf kayak, a 500-metre soft sand run, a 2-kilometre swim, 500-metre soft sand run, a 3.5-kilometre board paddle, and then we wrapped it up with a nice, easy 5-kilometre soft sand run there and actually finished 18th, which I was pretty happy with in an open competition and having 6% vision and became the first blind person to complete the cool and gold so I was I was pretty happy with that and let me tell you I was pretty exhausted at the end it took me two and a half hours I was absolutely cool there's a round of applause coming from the commentary booth here and I think in the stand shared as well outstanding stuff Brian and Jason uh, yeah just such a grueling event that as is the 1500 we see the swimmers coming into their final 150 meters we've had a little message in some late mail from coach matthew brown who's coaching mc bomb next to me em just let us know her time she remembers all the way back in the day when she was 12 years old in her first age national championships he knows exactly the negative split that she got a negative split at 12 years old the first lap 32 28 and the second lap was 31 91 this is the memory of those coaches and these athletes he remembers things I can't even remember these days. So I was pretty happy to see that message and see that he still remembers the exact swim that it was. So, yeah, and you can hear that bell now coming through. This is your last 100 metres of this 1,500. And what a race it's been. Blanford has really led this entire way and hasn't let anyone sort of catch up to her. She's just held this. And looking nice and strong and smooth through the water, she's not upping it the pace anymore but you can see out there Alps in lane three has slightly up to her stroke rate you can see her arms are moving faster than Blanford right now yeah, it's a brave swim to lead from the front and maintain it all the way through the 1500 the pressure on Blanford is building the bells have been rung for all swimmers now last one coming in to that final hundred is Charlie Barber from Manly outstanding swim by her outstanding by anyone to finish this but wow that turn has changed things a little bit Blanford is still in the lead but in lane three Gemma Apps is coming home very strong she's got a longer stroke possibly but Blanford well she finds another gear it's like she's heard us she's got her eyes facing that way she's breathing on the right can see the contenders coming along, but no one will catch her. Blanford wins that one. Coming home <laughs> to great tunes here on the Gold Coast as well. Blanford with an impressive time too. That is slightly faster than what she seeded as. She seeded with a time of 17.39 and she's beaten that by a good 10 seconds, 11 almost. Yeah, we will have to watch that time tonight as there is only two 16 year olds in that time final. So that time, we'll be on watch tonight to see if that will pick up a medal somewhere. Gold, silver or bronze, it could be either of them. That was a very good time this morning and excited to watch this race tonight. Can't wait for it and really well explained there by MC Bomb. Of course, there are 16 and 17-year-olds in these timed finals. So 
There'll be an age champion on each of those age groups as we prepare for the third of three timed finals. Here are the results of that previous one. Just up on screen now, Blandford, of course, led from the front and maintained it. Gemma Apps and Emily Holmes. Take your marks. So the third of three timed finals in one of the most difficult events there are, the 1500 metre freestyle. This is possibly the most gruelling of all the freestyle events. Out fast is lane three, Delta Cross, a Highlander. They, she had a pretty similar time coming in to Charlotte Boma in lane three, uh, and lane four, sorry, out of Trinity Grammar, and Holly Fleming in lane five from Rackley. Those three look to be the contenders for this particular time final. There's three 15-year-olds as well, so their age group, 15, 16, this is 15 to 17 years in this time final. Yeah, so a number of 15 year olds who have been competing in our second and now our third race. As we see lane nine, Madison Brand, swimming quite strong there. I'd love to see if she is not just going to take it at heart and burn in the back end. I'd love to see an outside smoker in a 1500. There's just, there's nothing better than watching someone on the outskirts because the middle lanes may not be able to see them on the outsides. So if Madison Brand can just stick to her laurels, worked and stick to her race plan out in lane nine. I think she, she could rattle the tree of the swimmers in the middle and she's looking strong as well but it is our middle markers who are taking that early little lead but oh don't you go anywhere we're only 135 meters into this long 1500 meters. It's a long race isn't it? I love seeing the um, pink swimsuits and I know that MC Bomb is a favorite, favorite pink swimsuit um, swimmer and she likes the the pink goggles and cap combination as well. Em, do you ever pair the three or is it just the, the swimsuit and cap or just the goggles and cap? You can definitely get cap and goggles pink and I wear pink goggles all the time. <laughs> but not often do you see like a bright pink suit. Yeah, Normally this it's three. like a red yep. or um, we get lots of black suits. Obviously when we race for the Australian team, we see a lot of green and gold stuff, not a yep. lot of pink stuff. Obviously, we know that pink is a strong colour because the piranhas wear that pink cap. So you see that bright pink cap go very fast. So not only does red go fast, but pink goes fast. That's very true. The piranhas, they're back in 16th place on the club point score at the moment. That's after last night's events. But they usually move up as we go through the week. Moringa, the piranhas with the pink cap, they're always a strong club. But at the moment, we've got... Two swimmers in this event. Lane three is Delta Cross wearing a great pink swimsuit. And lane five, Holly Fleming from Rackley. There are a couple of ones to watch in this evening's final, the timed final of this event that will be swum in the evening. Um, Hannah Allen, also out of Rackley, coached by Damien Jones. She's one of the stars of Australia's Youth Commonwealth Games. She was in Trinbago last year and she won the 800 freestyle gold and added a silver in the 400 freestyles. So you can just see some of the freestyle depth we have in Australia's junior ranks. She'll be one to watch in tonight's event. That is the 15 to 17 years timed final for the 1500. At the moment, we're watching the third timed final, which is usually the slowest of the three time finals, if you can call any of the athletes uh, or the times here on the Gold Coast slow. None of them are slow, are they, Braden? No, there's... You, you can't compete at a national age championship being slow. There are countless athletes at home who would have just missed out on these qualifying times. These qualifying times are tough. They're world caliber times. To be honest, I would honestly, I'd be pretty, I'd be, I feel like someone come tell me if I'm wrong here, but I feel like the qualifying times for the Australian national age championships would be the most competitive and challenging to make in the world. Emily Seabom, do you think I'm wrong here? Do you think we have the highest standard here in Australia? You can see we have a high standard here in Australia because you can see how many international swimmers have come across to join into this 2024 Australian Age Championships. We'll probably see some more internationals come in for the Open competition as well. 
I think we have so much depth here. Like to have three heats of a 1500 is pretty impressive. And we've seen, we have lots of distance swimmers here in Australia. Obviously, if we go through the program, you can see Tracy Wickham holds the record from 19 78. It blows my mind. We also have some great names here. We have Lani Pallister, who's now, you know, up and coming in that distance to me. She is a strong force to be reckoned with. We also have Titmus, who is such, such a good distance swimmer, who races Katie Ledecky. We have that great Australian USA battle. And this competition is just on fire here on the Gold Coast, as it always is. It's always great competition. We see Great stars come out of this meet and we'll see them head into, you know, the next couple of Olympics. We'll definitely see them. LA 2028, we have Brisbane 32. It's just exciting to see the level of competition. Yeah, it is really a great time to be a junior swimmer. Of course, after this meet, we go straight into the Oceania Junior Championships. And later on in the year, we have the Pan Pacifics coming to Canberra. That'll be held in Australia for the very first time. So if you want to get down to Canberra and see the best of Pan Pacific swimming, there'll be some Australians on the watch there from this very meet chosen to compete there, the Junior Dolphins and the stars of tomorrow. This is where we identify them, the coaches and the, the pathway development managers have their eyes on nine now and many of them here in the stands looking out for who to watch are there any that have taken your eye, Braden and Jason, as we've watched the first three days unfold? I just, I am very excited. I've got a, I've got a bit of bias. I love Macy Sheridan. She is just such an up-and-coming swimmer, so young. You just don't know what she can come out and do. But I know we are speaking with Gary Barclay last night, and he had his eyes on Luke Higgs, who is one of the swimmers out of Warringah, one of the piranhas. And he's still so young and did that whole 1500 out by himself. So he can qual if he could qualify for those pathway programs to go compete at the Oceania or the Pampac Championships, those kind of competitions do give these athletes the experience and give them the experience to then go on and use that as confidence to then go on to later Australian swim teams. So there's just so many athletes here because we've got swimmers who are 13 years old swimming faster than some of our 15, 16, even 17, 18 year olds it's who are competing wild. as well. It's incredible to see and you just don't know what they can do under the lights here tonight. It's, you just, you, you don't want to count your chickens as we keep saying. We love <laughs> you, chickens. You Maybe can't. we should be counting our moths. There's a lot of moths here at the <laughs> night time. <laughs> has anyone else uh, who is attending the event spied those huge moths that are the size of small albatrosses by dive bombing the pool last night? They like the lights. They also like my finals. face as well. I, um, Live on the broadcast last night, I think we both saw, well, I definitely <laughs> did. I had one that kept landing on my face mid-sentence, mid which rattled me a fair bit. Brad but and I, Jason nearly inhaled one of them as we watch on screen Delta Cross coming through in uh, lane three from Highlanders. There's another cross name to look out for, and we saw Tex Cross last night performing outstandingly in the finals. He was in that 400-metre race. And we look forward to seeing him in, in continuing the events. He continues to stake his claim on an open position. Uh, gold in the 400 free. And he beat Marcus De Silva, who's also a fellow junior dolphin. And Marcus has been in that team since 2022. So as you say, Brayden, these junior athletes really are contenders for the big stage in terms of international meets. And with Paris just around the corner, we always see a late bolter don't we? I love to see those athletes who come out of absolutely nowhere on an Olympic or a Paralympic year and just, it throws some of our Olympians and Paralympians who maybe went, yeah, yeah, I've got my spot pretty much cemented. Let's just rock up and make sure I finish top two. And then a young gunner who's 15, 16, 17 years of age, who then those Olympians go, where did they come from? They came from nowhere. But us here at the National Age Championships, we get to watch them. So when you see these amazing athletes who you have your eye and go, oh my goodness, that is a world caliber time. Just give them a few years time and they're going to be on these Pathways programs, on these Junior Dolphins teams to then go on and compete in their open Australian swim teams. Because, and you know the best part of being on the swim teams is you get a number and that number is etched in history. Yeah, which number were you? I was P285. So we're in the 300s now. So I'm, I'm pretty happy to be one of those 200 athletes. It makes me seem old, like yeah. one of those 
old stained on <laughs> things on the Australian Paralympic swim team. I do like being P285. Yeah, that's a good number. Anything in the 200s is pretty exciting as we watch a, a new level of energy and uh, a bit more commotion coming from behind this commentary booth from all of the coaches that stand around and behind us. There's some whistles coming from there and some communication being passed down the pool as lane three, Delta Cross, gets that turn and kick off the wall. MC Bomb, she looks smooth at the moment and no trouble at all, but she's quickened the pace. Yeah, yeah almost got a pink suit out there, Brayden, which I like. You can definitely see her in that front marker there. She's got about seven metres on the field here, so can she extend this lead any more in the last 500 metres? Be very interesting to see. She's got a very nice stroke, breathing both sides, so she's having a look at who's around her, who's close by, but also making sure that her neck doesn't get too sore, just breathing to the one side. I love the turn speed as well, which I think is really impressive. We've talked a few times in these distance events. Sometimes our younger athletes do like to think they can conserve their energy on those turns, doing long, looping turns, but they have... Let's do some quick math. It's 29 turns here in the 1500. So if they're going 0.2 slower in those, that's going to accumulate very quickly to a couple of seconds. So I love to see cross there in lane three with some nice slick turns. Let's have a look here. Watch this turn speed. Bang! Fantastic stuff here. She is saving free energy and time there just by being really strict and disciplined in her turn speeds. Brayden, what's the strategy behind picking up the pace now with 500 to go? I think you want to you want to have a back end mentality in a fifteen hundred meters. You don't. You, we've seen countless swims of swimmers who go out really hard in that first five hundred and then start to taper off, and they just have nothing less left in that last five hundred meters. But as we see, crosses she's taking that hard, but it doesn't look like she's fading back towards those back markers in lanes four, five, and in lane two as well. So I think she's really trying to pace and build into those three five hundreds. It's something that I would use in 1500 meters swimming I'd use kind of that first 500 to set myself up nicely get myself out in front settle in to that you don't want to back off you want to settle in to that second 500 and then that third 500 I kind of break it up I count down by fives which which makes sense but I swim at like a 500 so I start building and then I hit a 400 speed that last 400 and then I try and swim around that uh, trying to hold that 400 pacing it's you're not going to be as fast as your 400 pacing at 1500 it's a long way but having that mentality to swim it like a 400 with that 400 urgency. Then once you get to that 200, that 100, you just swim it like you would swim a 200 and a 100. You're not going to be yeah. going as fast as that because then we'd be dropping board records that going 13 minutes. But I think having that mentality of in those last couple of hundred metres, swimming it like you're doing it in training if you're doing multiple sets of 200s or 300s. And that's how you're going to create a great build into the end there. And I think we're going to see a great little time here from Dave Cross there in lane three. It's Delta Cross. It's going to be a great little time. I think she may be ducking under. I think she's on pace for a bit of a PB as well, which is what we'd love to see here yep. on day four. We certainly do. And uh, in terms of the 1500 being one of those grueling events, these swimmers, they're so professional at such a young age now. We see them training in the same uh, teams as the older, the Opens, and, and some representatives of Australian standard. In terms of the training required of the 1500, how many sessions are these swimmers doing away a week? How many kilometers do you think they clock? Well, I was lucky enough to speak to one of our, one of our top 1500 swimmers in the country in Nicholas Sloman. He's from the Noosa Aquatic Center and was actually just selected on his first ever Australian Olympic open water team for the 10K. So he's, a 1500 is a bit of a sprint for him, but in talking to him, he was doing at least one swim session a day it was usually two swim sessions or a swim in a gym session. And he'd probably be averaging about six to seven kilometers a day and about that 60 to 80 kilometers wow. a week. Just and that's on average. Some weeks he'd be clocking over 10 kilometers a session because he is, he's racing a 10 kilometers. So you want to make sure you're training over what you race. You don't, you don't want to be saying, I'm going to swim 750 meters in training and then try and swim at 1500. So these girls would be pretty used to doing 2K, three kilometer time yeah. trials in training because that makes this 1500 just seem achievable yeah. because it is such a mental race yeah it really is and that's incredible insight from Braden Jason two-time Paralympian uh, a 400 meter swimmer himself 
And imagine trying to just pace yourself at the same pace as a 400. It's, uh, it's hard to understand for us common people, but it's some of what we love seeing as we mix with the stars of tomorrow on the Gold Coast here for the Australian Age Championships. And in lane three, one of them, maybe, is Delta Cross. She came in with a time of 17.51.17. It's not the fastest of the seeding, but she is 15 years old. And we've mentioned there's three of these time finals. If you're in the top three in your age group, you're looking at a medal. Exactly right. And I th Delta Cross definitely would have been looking down that start list at the rest of the 15-year-olds. It would know where those times are. There's not too many in that final tonight, Kate. So she would kind of would have looked at that second heat as well to know where those 15-year-olds are at to see if she too can contest and get on top of that podium. And she's just swimming fantastically. And it's incredibly hard to swim a 1,500 out in front. Maybe she should go and have a chat with Luke Higgs because he did that last night in his gold medal performance in the 1,500 metres. Well, her contender will be swimming tonight, Taryn Roberts. Um, sorry, she's actually 17. She'll be one of them. But... Smith is the contender of the 15-year-old in the time final tonight, as is Maya Behrman. Those two are 15 years old. So if, you know, if this is a quick time here from Delta Cross, she may end up on the podium. And it's interesting when you're swimming out on your own in an age group that combines many, uh, you've just got to lay down the best time you can and hope for the best as a time final. It can be interesting to see how that unfolds as the swimmers swimming tonight with faster swimmers may not necessarily go as fast as Delta Cross. So stay tuned as we enter the final 100 metre and the bell is sounded for Delta Cross from the Highlanders, 15 years old. Split time is 16.20. Her time coming in was 17.51. So it looks like she'll be beating that by a fair way, Brayden. Yeah, it would take a bit of a sting here, around a 130, last 100. If she wants to get under her PB there or her entry time, you would assume is her PB. So that's a great swim there. And I think her coach really should have a look at that turn speed and really contribute her success, hopefully getting a PB here to her turn speed. Coming into her last turn, that's still a very quick and crisp turn, about one to two kicks there, coming up the five minute mark, great discipline. And she's kept up her stroke rate that entire time and not faded at all, I think. She's been doing a lot of work back at her home club and it's really proving and paying off here, I think is well and truly going to be a PB here for Delta Cross. Delta Cross crosses the 25 metre mark, coming home strong as well. Another 15 year old, Charlotte Boma. So those two in the same age category, they are competing for places there's no final tonight for them. It's all on the line now. And here's the score. The time is 17.27. That's a PB. Well, if we assume the seeding time was a PB, which it often is, it's a 20-second improvement. 23 seconds, in fact. Absolutely incredible swim there by Delta Cross. Led from start to finish. There was a few contenders there for the first couple of hundred metres. But then as she pulled away, she really relied on her turn speed. I am very impressed with her turn speed there. That would have saved her at least three seconds, I reckon, over that 1,500 metres. And then 20 seconds there contributed to her beautiful swimming. That was a textbook 1,500 there from Delta Cross. Take a bow. Yeah, looking down the, the uh, seeded times, Smith in tonight's final got 17.15 in her seeding time. So that will be a close call when we see them race. But... As we've said, 15 years old, just has to beat the other 15-year-olds. We see the last swimmers coming in. That's lane seven, Mia Horskins out of Surrey Park, a crowd favourite, it sounds like. And just a result and a goal and accomplishment for any of these swimmers to finish 1,500 metres. Delta cross, one, two, cross, underline, and watch out for in the future, a big smile for the crowd as well. Yeah, we'd love to see the smiles, especially after a 1,500 metres. I'm not sure how she has the energy to smile there, but obviously with a 23-second PB and taking out that third and final 1,500 there, hey, that is something to smile about. 23-second PB, you don't get that too much often when you, when you get into those older age groups, so embrace it while you can, Delta Cross.
So a swim off in event 66, the girls 14 year old 50 meter freestyle. These two had the exact same time. You couldn't split them, Miller Hall and Stephanie Clarence. And they're gonna be right on each other's fingertips as they come into the last 15 meters, both out of the Northern Territory, both with the same time coming into this swim off. It's gonna be neck and neck. You, you couldn't script it. It is Miller Hall that comes in with a time just 0.3 or under faster than Stephanie Clarence. Well done. What a swim there. And backing up from this morning is not hard. She, she would have been tired after that 50 in the heat this morning. And to come back and race against her fellow statesmen, that is a fantastic swim there. And off to the finals to race under lights tonight. Fantastic work there. And that's a skill to learn as well, being able to race under pressure there. Fantastic swimming. Just a little correction on my behalf. Uh, NT means no time, and I read it wrong on my uh, score sheet here. So they are not from the NT. Apologies to Miller Hall and Stephanie Clarence. Uh, I'll send their, their families a Christmas card. Well deserved from them. We enter into the next event, though. Boys, 16 to 18 years, 800 metre freestyle. Take your marks. Event 69, the boys 16 to 18 years, 800 metre freestyle. And this one has Australian royalty of swimming written all over it. The 16 year Australian record is held by Kieran Perkins. The 17 years Australian record is held by Mac Horton. And the 18 years, well, that's stood for 23 years and it's held by none other than Ian Thorpe. Some names to remember and <laughs> ones that no doubt everyone here listening at home would know. And we'll watch and see these time finals if any new names can come up as ones to watch for the future of Australian swimming and possibly ink their name into these record books for the Australian Age Championships. Out in lane five, we have Tex Cross, who is a star of the show in the 400 meter. He got gold last night. We've got lane seven as well, Jai Benyon. Those two neck and neck at the moment. Ike Martinez in lane six from Rackley and Jai Benyon. Sorry, my mistake. I am calling the heat from this evening. Those players will be involved this evening. This is heat two of the time finals. So in the water, we have another Thorpe. In fact, not Tex Cross. He'll be on tonight. And Sam Thorpe is in the water at the moment, 17 years old, out of St. Peter's Weston. Jackson Flynn in lane two, right alongside him as they enter into the turn. Now we're talking about that final swim tonight, talking about Tex Cross. His sister, I'm guessing it's his sister because they both got the same last name, Delta Cross just finished off that 1500 just before these boys drove in did a massive PB, so that was great to see. And yeah, I think it's her brother's up tonight in that final swim. But we got Thorpe out here, we got McKay, we've got Powell. It's very exciting, but these records, I mean, Perkins, you've got Thomas Neal, you've got Mac Horton, Sam Short, you've got Ian Thorpe. They are the big names in distance swimming. Not only just here in Australia, but in the world. People recognise these names wherever you go. Well, last year's winner, the 17-year-old, was Johan Szymanski. We know that name from last night, battling it out in the 17 years age group for the 400s. He'll be contesting this 800 title as well. He'll be there tonight alongside Tex Cross. Mike Bennion as well. They're on tonight. But in front of us here at hand, we have a couple of internationals in lane zero, Nail Ru from Tahiti. And in lane one, Singapore, Wei, Sheng, Ian, Leong. And we've seen a huge contingent of Singaporean swimmers come down to the Gold Coast for this swim. It's impressive and the crowd noise every time an, a Singaporean takes the block is really good to hear. As we see lane seven, James Lee take the turn, Braden. Yeah, keeping an eye on James Lee, he's Looking really strong, long, smooth, smooth as fast there. Out in lane seven, 17 year old. Swimming well below his seated time there. So if he can hold on into this second 400, he's due and is ready for a great PB. As we see, 
William Mackay there in lane number four. He's one of the only 16-year-olds in 15-year-olds, sorry, in this race. So watch out. He wants to make sure he can throw it in a good time, but a little bit off the pace as the moment, as we see. James Lee there in lane second, lead, lane seven leading the pack. Yeah, lane seven out of MCA, 17 years old. There's a couple of 18-year-olds. Lane two, Flynn Jackson out of Randwick City. Not my hometown, but where I am now. And a shout out to the hometown club earlier. It was really nice to meet Mittagong and Picton former swimmers and lane seven mc8 we've mentioned there's also st peter's western contesting this one samuel thorpe a name synonymous with australian swimming he gets the turn there and out in front though i'm really impressed by the style and stroke of james lee brayden jason what are you looking for in terms of speed and flow in this 800 meter event it's definitely speed through efficiency. It's a long race here. You don't want to spend your bookies just on rating up too high, kicking too much out of the water. He's keeping his legs nice and under the water, minimising his drag here, and having a nice quick turn there, flipping over, getting into his trimmer, and getting out past that five-metre mark, kicking nice and quickly, creating that boulder and those waves, as Matt Walsh has been saying across the broadcast, and now he's riding that wave through home past this halfway mark of this 800 meter freestyle he's just looking really strong and in control nice and long at the back like exiting his hand out past his hip which is beautiful to see lengthening out in front and just looks really in control here really efficient swimming here by lee out in lane second and really he's pulling away from the pack Brayden, it's interesting. These days, you mostly see swimmers breathe on one side. There was previously a theory that you should breathe on both sides to maintain balance. What's the idea behind breathing on one side? I think it's whatever you, you're used to and doing in training. You don't want to come out here and just practice swimming, looking or breathing to your left because you want to watch the person on your left-hand side. If that's not something that you do in training, but I think it's definitely up to the athlete. And I think when it comes to 1500s, it's definitely breathing when you need to breathe and how you can maintain your rhythm. I know in, say, a 50 freestyle, you may not have been breathing at all, so it's not really a factor. So in these longer races, I think it really comes down to the athlete, how you can create a rhythm and create a ride through this swim here, and whether that's breathing on your left on the way down and right on the way back, or just breathing less the whole time. It's something your body will adapt to in training. So making sure you do what you do in training when you race, because you don't want to start trying things out in racing, because that's when horrible things happen. Yeah, absolutely. MC Bomb, what's the what's your strategy? Both sides, one side, which side? I can only breathe one side. So just like I could probably only throw and kick with my right hand, my <laughs> left hand would be shocking. I'm the same when I breathe. So I have to be really careful because I I need to learn how to breathe both sides but I never did that as a young kid and now it's just stuck with me so unfortunately yeah I'm a one side breather but I don't get a sore neck or anything like that so I'm lucky but I do have my eye on because we only have one 16 year old in tonight's final swim you've got to keep your eyes on the 16 year olds in this race there's going to be a few ones because we're going to see medals here I know they won't get that medal this morning but they'll be watching the times done in tonight's swim obviously because this age group is 16 to 18 year olds each age group will win their medals gold silver and bronze so i've got my eye on lane obviously number four the 16 year old out there doing a very good job but at the moment it seems to be lee has just turned into that last 100 and turned on the burners kate you can see he's up his kick you can see he's breathing every stroke now to look at, over across the pool to make sure that he's still going to hold on to this lead. Yeah, Lee out there in lane seven, a surprise contender as we enter the final lap. One lap to go. McNolan Carell is coming out as well. Lane nine, he is turning on an extra level of performance. He is 18 years old, so he will be in a separate age group to James Lee when it comes down to medals, but this is an impressive battle for the final touch. And of course, all swimmers are very competitive. They love to touch first. Looks like no one can really reach Lee as he approaches the red markers for the last final few meters. It will be Lee and the time 8.19. It's much quicker than his seeding time, which was 8.27. So 
about 12 seconds off the seeding time. It was Carell next in, and then Lindsay Luke. Watching those final swimmers come in as well. It's lane six, Hayden Ferguson on the screen. He gets the touch. And they're all in, and wow, what a finish. Congratulations to be able to finish a, an 800. It's a battle, and you can see it on the faces. It's a warm day here, but the red face tells the story, doesn't it, Em? It does. You can see that they've really put everything they've got into this. They have no room to rest here. They want their times to be counted in tonight's results. So there's some fast times out there. Those boys in tonight's race we'll be watching this morning to see what their competition's going because just because they're in the final doesn't mean they're guaranteed a medal they still have to go faster than these boys this morning so we've got that heat number three up right now as more action here on the gold coast for the australian age championships we're on day four and haven't we seen some swimming cake we have it hasn't stopped has it it's been night after night of outstanding stuff. We've had all the multi-class and now we're into the able-bodied and those are the results on your screen. 8.19 from James Lee. The time to beat tonight. And the time to beat in this next time final. So 8.19 was the time laid down by James Lee. That is the time to beat for the boys who are 17 years old racing in this third of five timed finals. There's a couple of 17-year-olds. Lachlan Washington in lane five. He needs to get around that mark. So does Hunter Kelly and so do the swimmers that will swim the fastest time final tonight. It's an interesting one because it is the 16 to 18 years, 800 metre freestyle. So there are three age categories that that involves and every age category has its own three medal placings. So it, you've got to give it your all it is the time that you lay down on first attempt that's going to matter the most, and it's the only thing that will matter. Coming into the first 100 metres, it's a battle so far between Kai Portis, Lachlan Washington, and in lane six as well, Wilson Moran. Out hard from the turn, a really nice turn, in fact, was Callum Boyle. He's got the stroke on the others at the moment, but it's very early days. It is early days. We're only in that first 100 of an 800. These boys will want to settle into their stroke. They want to find their rhythm, their breathing pattern, their stroke rate. They're probably counting their strokes to know if they can up that or they need to drop a stroke. You don't often see a lot in the distance events them working on that underwater. The skills for that underwater are not crucial in a distance event. It's about saving your legs so you don't see them going out to 15 metres, holding their breath, anything like that. It's more come up, start swimming, get into that rhythm because finding your rhythm in an 800 and a 1500 is super important because you want to be able to hold that for the entire race and then up that at the end. We see a lot of battles in those distance events in the last 25 metres where it's, they give it everything they've got left. In terms of the um, warm-up and cool-down for, for an 800 and the longer distance events, there's a lot more laps to swim. Does that change your warm-up at all? Absolutely. I mean, for, for just me, swimming a 50 to a 200 was very different warm-up. So I can only assume that for an 800 and a 1500, you're doing a really warm, long warm-up. I'd say around that 3K. I sit around that 1500 for about a 200 race, so I can only imagine they're going about that 3K plus. And then again, for swim down, I'm swimming about a K swim down maybe to 1.5. So these guys will need a long swim down to let their arms sort of get rid of all that lactic acid that's built up in their muscles. They'll want to be sucking on their power aids, probably some protein, especially after this. So protein bars, whether they have protein shakes. You know, these guys really need to get on their recovery quick because for such a long event, they're spending almost nine minutes at high lactic levels, so they want to get that down as quick as possible. So it's straight into that recovery. You know, even taking off the suit, sometimes those suits are so compressed on your body. So to take them off and just let your body sort of relax into the, the feel of not having that tight suit on your legs is really important too. You notice when swimmers take those suits off, you can see that mark around their leg from their suits being really tight, you know, 
Sometimes those suits can take 15 minutes to put on just because you're squeezing your body into the tightest suit it can possibly be in because you want that less drag, you want your body in that suit and you want to swim fast. And we know there are rules around suits these days as well, MC Bomb. For anyone new to the sport, um, take us through those rules. Yeah, so back in the day, I hate saying back in the day because it seems like it was so long ago, <laughs> but it wasn't. It was not long ago at all. 2009, we had uh, the full suit, so almost like the Thorpey suit that you can remember where he wore full arms and full legs. We're obviously not allowed that in swimming anymore. So now uh, boys out there right now are wearing the only suit they can pretty much wear, which is down to their knees, to their hips. Girls can do the same, so knees all the way up to the shoulders. And there has to be super... The, the suits go through so much testing because there's, there's fabrics that you can't use. They can't be too buoyant. Obviously, they can't be too water resistant. So the suits go through a lot of work. Before they're approved, they have to be sent to FINA to be approved. They get a sticker on them that says that they're good to go. And when you're at those high-level competitions, they need to see that sticker before you go out there. Otherwise, you can't swim. Wow, fascinating insights from MC Bomb because, yeah, we do, those of us who are old enough to remember the torpedo suit, it was iconic. That's not allowed anymore. Those streamlined suits are so important. They can really give an advantage. But these boys all wear, it looks like, the long shorts that are compressed. And uh, as MC Bomb was going over, nutrition and warm down and warm up is so important. I cannot believe it. It's like I'm just getting my head around him, the fact that these guys would be doing a 3K warm-up. But is that like, I, I mean, how do they manage it all? Well, like Brayden was saying, they're doing big works of training. The whole week, they're continually going. They probably wouldn't do less than 6K a session. So a 3K warm-up for them is like a sprint. So... Yeah. You know, a lot of these boys, too, will not only swim an 800 free, they'll swim a 1500 free. They might even dip their toes into the open water as well. So we see them really do a lot of that distance swimming, which is where they like to swim. And you see in those, in the water now, look at that stroke that they've got. You know, some of them have a really short stroke. You can see in lane number eight there that they have a really short stroke. And you can see out in the middle of the field there in lane four, he has quite a very a long stroke, smooth stroke. He's using more of his kick than outside on this outside lane. So you see lots of different techniques and there's not an overall best way to do it, but it's the best way to get yourself from A to B in the quickest. Yeah, exactly. And different body types, I assume, would have different um, methodologies around them as well. In lane four, we're watching... Uh, the leader, Kai Portis, out ahead. He's 18 years old, so he'll need to be setting in a time that will contend with the 18-year-olds, the oldest of this age category. In lane eight, though, keep an eye on Jackson McCleary, who's coming up alongside him. He's also 18 years old. And he had a seated time that was just behind Kai Portis, only six seconds behind, and across 18, 800 metres, and six seconds really isn't a lot. No, and especially in these distance events, you see so many massive PBs, you know. it's You never really hear of, oh, I only went one second faster. You normally hear, I did 10 seconds faster, 15 seconds faster, which is great to see because those big drops are super important. Obviously, the big barrier here for these guys is dropping under that eight-minute mark. Are we going to see that tonight? Obviously, with our fastest qualifiers sitting at that 8.0399, you can hear those bells coming in right now. So that's the last 100 metres here. Let's watch as these boys add in that kick, Kate, and they fasten up those arms as we head to the last 75 metres. Yeah, you can see the kick coming in strong for lane six. That's uh, Wilson Moran. He's put in a strong kick, and actually he is overtaking the lead almost. They come into the turn. The turn will be crucial. The underwater kick will matter. First up out of the water in the uh, air, head up, I suppose, is Callum Boyle. And right alongside him, though, is lane six, Wilson Moran. Making a move now, he's within a body length, he's half a body length, the stroke is coming thick and fast, he's going to beat him, it looks like Boyle, Portis, 
Foyle's coming up alongside. Porter's still in lane four, but it's Wilson Moran taking the charge. Wilson Moran might just have this by the touch. And he will take it. 8.31, 33. So obviously we're on a watch for that time because he's in that 16 year age bracket so that time will be important to watch for tonight's race but what a swim that was Kate we did say it they like to sprint that last 25 meters to get to the wall and he just took that one out over Portis who was leading for pretty much the whole way it looks like he found a, an entirely new gear and I was going to mention the same thing he absolutely came out of nowhere really saved it in the tank and an 831 for him as we enter the next heat of the same event. So this is heat four of timed finals. Of course, time finals, everything is on the line. The final time that you lay down is the time that will be counted towards a medal. There are some time finals that will be run tonight. They are the fastest seeded time finals. So there'll be one of these in this age category tonight from 6 p.m. across your screens of nine now. Please join us. Uh, but this one, it matters because there are people in this age group, 16 years old, 17 years old, 18 years old, that could be contesting among the other boys of the same age. There's a medal given in every age year group. So Kai Gilbert in lane five, 16 years old, he will be contesting against some of the others we've seen already. Tonight, he'll be up against people like Lucas Fackrell, the mackerel. He'll swim tonight. He's 16 years old, and we've already seen times laid down by 16-year-old William Mackay, as well as Wilson Moran in that previous event. And I know a favourite swimmer of yours, Braden Jason, is Fackrell the Mackerel. Oh, it was... It just came down to that 1,500 metres last year. He's a, he's a distance specialist, Lucas Fackrell the Mackerel. We love to call him here in the Coventry booth and here at Swimming Australia. But he's 1,500 against Luke Higgs last year. Obviously, he was, it was the 14, 15 year age group. It was just beautiful. So you, can, you know that he just loves to race the long, hard, tough stuff. So coming in tonight, he'll be a bit younger than some of those other swimmers. But I'll be watching out for some of those 17 and 18 year old boys because he'll be coming after them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can't necessarily determine who's going to come out hard or, or fast in the 1500 because getting the seeding time, it's just about getting in that fast heat, isn't it? And you want to be in that fastest final so you're contesting it. But they don't necessarily swim their PBs in the seeding time, particularly for the long distances. So Fackrell, he'll be in lane nine tonight, but he may be up there with the 17 and 18 year old boys in terms of time. Exactly right. And we saw James Lee out in lane seven in one of our earlier heats. And he dropped nine seconds from his seated heat. So these athletes, and if you do the maths on those turns, if they just focus on their turns alone, they could drop two seconds if they're turning 0.2 faster each turn. So that's just easy time that they can drop that accumulates over an 800 and a 1500 metre. So we can't be going in and looking at those seated times and saying, hey, that's what they're going to go because... If you're going to drop PBs in an 800, it's very rare to drop a 0.1 second PB. You're going to be dropping multiple seconds, especially at this young age. Yeah, and tonight's final will be must-watch viewing as well. We'll have uh, Johan Szymanski, uh, we'll have Tex Cross, and we'll also have Ike Martinez out of Rackley. He's 17 years old, and he won the 400-metre freestyle last year. So former Cairns boy, one to watch in all of those contesting these 800-metre races. As we see coming into the turn now, Kai Gilbert, the 16-year-old. The 16-year-old, the only, well, one of three 16-year-olds in this time final is leading the charge early in the race. So far, our fastest 16-year-old has been at that, that 8.25 mark. So we're looking at this for medals tonight. Obviously, only one 16-year-old in that time final. So it's whatever these guys can do in the morning will be your gold, silver, and bronze here. So exciting to watch this as he heads through. He's doing a great job, very much in control of this race. Has a nice stroke rate. You can see that he isn't overusing his legs. They're sort of just hanging on there. And we'll see, as we did before, Kate, we'll see them bring that in in probably the last 25 metres, 50 metres of the race where it might be a little bit of a battle to the finish. It's always a battle to the finish, isn't it? You, no one loves to show their cards too early in a long-distance race. 800 metres, 
the score flippers, I mean, the, the lap flippers at the end of the pool, just off your screen at the other end of the pool, are showing how many laps they have to go. And the swimmers take a little glance up as they turn at the next turn. And the lap ticks over. At the moment, it's at seven. It will tick over to six. This is a little interesting one of the age championships as well, Em, because when we move into international meets, there's a different way of uh, telling swimmers and communicating how many laps there are to go. Can you explain how it's done? Yeah, you can see on the screen now, the officials there holding on to the number of how many laps to go. But when you head into that international competition, they have a screen at the bottom of the pool, so you don't even have to look up at all. So you basically just relax and swim your race as you normally would. These guys have to slightly lift up their head to see that marker of how many laps to go. Also, they do have the bell at the last 100 meters to be. Once you hear that bell too, you start to see the, di the change in their arms, in their legs. They come off that wall and they really give it everything they got, Braden. Em, you've just blown my mind here. This just shows how blind I am. I have 6% vision, so I am legally blind. And I've raced at numerous international competitions I have never actually seen that there is a timer, a, a lap planner on the bottom of the pool. I just always assumed that there was a lap counter because I can't see what's, what's going on in those fine, fine details there. So you just blow my mind there. I had no idea that happened and I would have like, well, seen it, just not be able to comprehend it through my retinas. Well, we'll trust you, Braden, to keep track and keep count of things in that case. You can be our counter because I, I think I'd lose count over 16 laps of an 1800 metre race. It's a lot to keep in your head as many thoughts are going through your head. And right now, they're in the hurt locker. A lot of things going through their head and through their body. What do you think about across a race like this that takes eight minutes, Em? I'm thinking when I swim, even for a 200, I'm singing a song in my head, to be oh, honest. Really? I'm singing, I'm kind of distracting myself for a little bit, but when it comes to the turns, I'm thinking about, okay, what have I got to do into the turn? And then um, some, one of my coaches once told me that if I sung to Taylor Swift Shake It Off, that was the stroke rate that I needed to keep going for the last 50 of 100. So I always had that in my head when I was swimming. I was like, if I sing it, shake it off, I can move my arms to that. And that's my pacing. So if we are watching you at the Open Championships, which is on here in the Gold Coast, right after the Age Championships, when you get in the water, people watching at home, Play Shake It Off and we can keep time and see how MC Bomb is going for her stroke rate. I wonder what coach Mr. Brown is thinking of that as he listens in at home. He's probably having a chuckle to himself, I'd say, <laughs> because he heard me try and get Taylor Swift tickets and I could not get one. Not even MC Bomb could get tickets. Seriously, come on, someone out there in Ticketek, help a sister out, help a four-time Olympian out for Taylor Swift's tickets. She swims to it. She sings to it in her head. Hopefully, she wins to it as well. And these swimmers here in front of us enter the final 100 metres. There goes the bell ringing loud and clear. All of them pretty neck and neck. And at this stage of 800, it's rare to hear the bells sing almost simultaneously like that, Brayden. Oh, we love hearing the bells ring a ding ding dong. It's the best song you can hear when you swim the long stuff, the 800s and the 1500s. But it actually, it's, it cannot be a scientifically proven fact, but just that sound alone can just bring about energy that you did not think you had. It just can really give you that lift. And we can see our middle markers here starting to move through. But I don't know, lanes two and lane three are looking really strong as well coming in here. We could see a bit of movement coming into this finish here. Though, okay, they've, they've found a second gear. Yep, well, for the 16-year-olds, 8.25 is the time to beat in lane three, Joshua Cairns, he is 18 years old, so he'll go a little bit quicker if he wants to get on the podium. Max Moylan and all the way behind, but at the moment it's Nelson and Cairns. Cairns and Nelson, and he'll go to Cairns for the touch, 8.33. Right behind him, 0 0.04 seconds, in fact, behind him is second placed Edward Nelson. So the times will come up and we'll get a summary of them. Doing a little bit of maths here in the booth, MC Bomb is just checking on who may in fact podium after that time final. Yeah, I've got to keep up to it because tonight when we come back, we're going to be watching that race so much because it's going to be an absolute 
battle for that first, second medal. But I've got to keep up with the age groups because I've got to remind myself that each age group is going to win a medal here. So even though we'll get first, second, third out of the touch, it might not be how the overall placing sits. So I'm excited to watch this one. Obviously, we saw Gilbert take it through for a lot of that race and then lost it just at the end. And that's how much the pacing goes to this race. If you pace this right, you have so much left at the tank, you could beat someone, even though they've held the lead for the entire lap. Take your marks. Fifth and final heat now in the water for the 16 to 18 years boys, 400, 800 meter freestyle. And these are all 16 year olds, apart from one, a visitor, Nail Rue, who was a late comer to the event. He's in lane nine, so he's 17, as well as Alexander Clarence in lane six. The rest are 16 years old, so keep an eye on all the times. They will be going up against each other. For 16 year olds, the time to beat at the moment is 8.25. Of course, we have a timed final tonight where a couple of 16 year olds will also contest. But at the moment, 8.25 is the line to beat. Jackson Hatchard in lane two out of the US, another visitor. We've got a record number of international attendees at this meet. It's fantastic to see. It really lifts the standard and the excitement around the event, doesn't it, Em? It does. It just goes to show how good the competition here is on the Gold Coast. Here in Australia, we have such great competition. And we have strong heats as well as even stronger finals. So. I'm excited that we have so many internationals coming over. I know we've seen a fair few from Singapore. I saw the team arrive this morning. They're looking like they're focused, they're in control. It was good to see them warm up a little bit out the back there this morning because I was out there swimming. But we spoke a little bit before about what you think about in a race like this. I've only gone up to around that 200 distance, but Brayden, you did 400. So what did you think about in a 400? I was like the little red caboose, just kept thinking, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. But I, I was kind of like you, if I got a good song in my head, it really did help push me through and kind of sing along and almost distract me from the pain and suffering I was putting myself in, in the Hurt Locker in the 800s. But I was definitely a bit of a self-talk athlete for most of my races, kind of self-talking to myself saying, you're not in pain. So pretty much just lying to myself. But sometimes those little lies that I tell myself saying that I'm not in pain or thinking back to those hard sets that I've done before, like 100, 100s or 5, 800s, those disgusting sets you, that you would do and you'd be lying in the gutter of the pool, chucking up your guts just full of lactic acid. You go, hey, this isn't as bad as that. Racing is so much easier than training. Yes, it's going to hurt, but it doesn't hurt as long as those long sets, Emily. You'd know that all too well. Those two-hour sessions that you can have, this is only eight minutes Two hours or eight minutes, what would you prefer, Brayden? I would definitely prefer eight minutes of pain compared to two hours of pain. Depends what you were talking about, though. If it's two hours of eating hot chips compared to eight minutes of eating hot chips, I'd take the two hours. But when it comes to pain and suffering, that is the long-distance stuff. You want to go for as short as possible, and that's why these boys are gunning for personal best here. And also gunning for that 824 barrier. We know we've got Fackrell, the mackerel, coming in the final tonight so he's gonna be watching that time as well to make sure he goes under it but these boys too they've been hearing us across here at the gold coast Corning center and here across the nine now network so these boys know what they need to do to get onto that podium and let me tell you these boys they'd be preparing to get some extra baggage to fly home across the country because you don't come to these things hoping not to win medals you expect to win medals you've done the work they're hoping to win them yeah absolutely and one of the contenders here in lane nine who's out far ahead of the pack at the moment is going to be flying a little further home, for, further home than across the country. He's in fact all the way from Tahiti and he moved into the fifth of these time finals back from the second. He's 17 years old and he has well and truly the fastest time coming into this particular timed final. That's why he's out so far ahead. He had 8.29 coming into it, and the rest of the times are around the 8.44 mark in those middle lanes with Burton and Keto and Abbott. But in terms of coming in 15 seconds faster, he's out in front, but how hard is it to keep going really fast across such a distance when, you're, when the rest of the pack is further back, Braden? 
I think it does come back to that self-talk and really going back to your race strategy. He would have spoken to his coach and his coach said, okay, here's your race plan, stick to it. So he would have made sure he's sticking to his race plan. And sometimes it is nice being out in front because you go, okay, if I, there's no pressure on me, no one's pushing me, no one's starting to have a, have a go now in the second 200, say, say oh my goodness, I, I, I'm freaking out, I've got I to go with them. He goes, no, I'm out in front, stick to my race plan, and he's going to have a fantastic race here. It's kind of like racing without pressure here. But also, in the same breath, because he's so far ahead of the rest of the field, these boys know he's far ahead. They would know what his seeded time is, and they're not too far away from him. They're like 20 seconds behind on paper. Yeah. But when it comes to the pool, they're not that far behind. So he's actually pulling these boys ahead and getting as close as they can to the 8.25 mark. Well, I would say he's pulling them ahead, but what's the danger for him? He'd usually be pacing himself alongside swimmers that are, are sort of closer to his time. Is there a risk that he slows down? There definitely is that risk, but it is for him and his relationship with his coach to be able to trust his process, go ahead, and he'd know that he's faster than a lot of these boys. He's in the outside lane, seated a lot faster. It's something that's quite uncommon here at the National AIDS Championships. So he'd know that he's faster than these boys, and in his mind, he'd be wanting to try and pull away as much as possible. Maybe off a turn, he's turning and seeing those boys at about that five meter mark. So he might turn and go, okay, they're at the five meter mark. On the next turn, let's see if I can push him out past those flags. And the next turn, let's see if we can push him back to that six meter mark. Try and push them back as far behind him as possible. That'd be a marker that he'd be gauging off the turns, coming back past those boys who are like a couple of meters behind him. Yeah, great insights from Braden Jason, two-time Paralympic swimmer. Freestyle, long distance and middle distance was his speciality. And of course, in the long distance events, we've spoken about how training and nutrition is so important. We heard from MC Bomb, her recommendations for cooling down and warming up. But Braden, I know athletes tend to have some interesting little rituals after races or a favorite snack that they allow themselves after an event. Was there anything particular you asked for from your coach? I know when the competition was done, especially going through age nationals, I was, I was really good when it came to being really strict, especially from New Year's to age championships or trials that were usually around that April, June mark. I'd make sure I wouldn't have any deep fried food. I wouldn't have certain things. But going through age groups, I remember there was this, ice, this new ice cream that came out and it came out around summer and I said okay I, I haven't had it yet mum and dad if I get a medal here at age nationals can I get myself this ice cream well it seemed like something small but for me someone I was very food motivated so having the promise of this I can't remember what ice cream it was but when I came back and I got my first Australian age medal mum and dad drove me past the corner shop we got my ice cream and oh by jolly it tasted pretty good what so the, kind of ice cream was it oh i think i can't really i think it was some sort of like layered chocolatey caramel oh, yeah. thing i am a fan of the chocolate caramel combination here and that's what these boys will be dreaming of when they hear this bell here for this last 100 here can they get under that 825 mark emily seabom doesn't look like they're close Look, for that 17-year age group, we're looking at a fast time of 8 19, 90, done by Lee in that first heat that we saw. So that's what our time here for lane number 9 is looking for, but that fast time for that 16-year-old is 8.25. Don't think we're going to hit that in this heat, but look at that, those legs that have just come in now on Burton out in the middle of the field with that green cap on. Yeah, that's Burton in lane four. Green cap going fast. Green for go, and it's time to do so. He approaches the 15 right behind the visitor, Rue, from Thailand. They're in different age categories, so it's down to what they score on the timing clock. Rue will get the first touch, but the charge home from lane four, Riley Burton, was so impressive. The time is 8.35. He's thrown down. That's 10 seconds behind the fastest 16-year-old we've seen, and there's a couple of 16-year-olds to come tonight. So hold on to that time and wait and see what comes of the evening session. There's one more swimmer to come, though, in this one. George Abbott. He's stroking long and strong and just full round of applause from the crowd here for anyone who finishes the 800 metre. It's such a gruelling event. On screen there, though, the visitor, Nael Rue, 
16 years old and beat his seeding time. Oh, just came close to it, actually. I've got a bit of hair envy there for our lane nine athlete. I've been growing my hair since Commonwealth Games oh, in Tokyo being bald. He's got a fantastic head of hair. He's a fantastic swimmer, but his hair growth is phenomenal as well. I'm, I'm envious. Was it a mullet or was it... I don't know. It was just luscious. It was like Fabio, the most <laughs> beautiful man in the cosmos. It was, it was great to see. Well, that wraps up the action here this morning at the pool. That was... Your final swim of the morning will come back live on 9 now at 6 p.m. tonight for session number eight. And wow, what a session that's turning out to be. Day number four, Brayden, and we've seen such great swims. I'm excited for tonight. You were joined in commentary by Brayden Jason, Kate Allman, and myself, Emily Seabum, and we'll join you back tonight. Thank you.